It will be exciting to watch Kyle Busch, a two-time champion of the sport, work his way through the field. Again, first time for this car at Nashville. What's in front of us, we don't know, but we're looking forward to it. Hamlin, Logano, green flag in the air at Nashville. Behind him, Kyle Larson, Logano Suarez, Chastain, the track house racing drivers back there in fourth and fifth to start this race. Something unique to this racetrack and unique this year, we're seeing shifting uh, at racetracks, sometimes just on short tracks, and even here at the mile and a third, this concrete oval, we've seen drivers shifting here as well. A lot of patience up front. Pretty calm between the 11 and the 5 of Carl Larson for first and second, but deeper in the field, you see side-by-side -side action. Drivers know the best. Big wiggle by wow, the 9 right of Chase track. Elliott. Yeah, up to the third lane. Saved the ride. We're talking about how aggressive you have to be with this race car. A lot of that is on corner entry speed. Really drive them deep in the corner. Chase Elliott tried to get all he could, and car just not didn't grip for him. Chase Elliott right now in the seventh position. Take a look. Yeah, that's a that's a big moment inside the race car. Nice day by Chase Elliott. That racetrack's going to get better and better on that upper groove. Pretty dirty right now, just starting this race out. I think ultimately that's where you're going to want to be. And I think, too, with these cars, the rack and pinion steering, it's a lot quicker. These drivers wouldn't have saved something like that at the, at the beginning of the year. They're getting more and more comfortable and understanding the inputs they need to put into this car when it does get out from under them. Concrete racetrack has a lot less grip. The tires really kind of chatter. It has a lot of content, a lot of bumps, little tiny bumps in the surface of the track, and it's really hard to get a hold of. A few of the younger drivers stacked up here. Austin Sindrick in the two. Moving to his inside, that 42, Ty Dillon. On board the Kyle Busch cam. Uh, the Kyle Busch car with the Toyota camera had to start at the back after that accident. And you can see aggression at times, patience at times. Oh, the seven car, LaJoy up the racetrack. Way back in the pack, man, the racing is fierce and, and dicey. Cars moving all over the racetrack, guys catching a lot of problems. Let's listen to the 19 car, Truex. Just sliding in those three, three seat front tires. Pretty much what I told you would do on that black. Greasy front tires. That tells me he goes down to the corner, turns the wheel. The front wants to go up the track, not kind of wrap around the corner like he's looking for. Good feedback from the driver. But early in this race, this concrete surface will change a lot throughout the day. Yeah, the one thing that I've noticed, Steve, is the track does have a lot of rubber from yesterday's, yesterday's Xfinity race still on the racetrack. And they've not really drove on the track in this condition. So it's actually a lot tighter balance-wise than what they were in practice. So if they had a good, heart, good car in practice, Probably a lot of guys out there right now talking about front grip. I love the options. You see the 24 around the bottom of the racetrack, the 19 moves up just a half a lane, just enough up the racetrack to get more air to his car, making it corner a little bit better. Now a half a lane lower. There's a 23 of Bubba Wallace back there in a little bit I guess unique position in the fact that he was 26. He was fastest in practice, so had a really terrible qualifying effort, put him to the back. But he's trying to follow that 18 up to the front. Right now, he has Ty Dillon on his outside. Marty. Yeah, Rick, they were so quick. In fact, fastest of the fastest lap, second fastest in five lap average, and fastest in 10 lap average on practice. So that qualifying lap caught him by surprise. But his owner, Denny Hamlin, said, listen, you simply made a mistake when you qualified. You know the car you have. Booty Barker told him, listen, we can get to the front. Let's just make it happen. But be patient on your way up through the field as Daniel Suarez makes a pass for third, Rick. Daniel's car looks really good right now early in the race. His teammate's just another spot or two behind him. Track house 
showing some strength here as they have all year long. We've seen so much parity and hot and cold from all these teams, guys running good one week and bad the next, but one team that runs good every single week is Trackhouse. I don't know how they do it. As drivers, how much confidence goes into now feeling comfortable running up front? After he gets that first win, how confident is he to run up front? Well, you have to learn how to race in the front. You think that driving a faster race car just all of a sudden makes everything easier, and it does make it easier, but executing on fast race cars is very difficult. That is one of the things that people don't take, give enough credit to the great race car drivers, being able to take a great race car and maximize it all day long. And that's what these young drivers in the Cup Series are figuring out how to do it. And they're starting to put all the pieces together, Junior, every single week, putting themselves in position to win. We know these teams have been shifting at a lot of racetracks. We're not used to seeing them shift at. Let's ride along board here and watch Kyle down in the corner. Comes off the, off the wheel, down shifts one. Some drivers talk about maybe not shifting at all when they move up the racetrack, carrying more momentum. Watch, watch the RPMs when he does downshift, how immediately it goes up. And what that does with this car and this drivetrain, obviously those RPMs go raise up the engine, but they also make the car drive better. It's more than just having more engine when you accelerate. It's about how the car drives in the middle of the corner, even off the gas with more RPMs. This car really likes RPMs. Now shifting gives it to it. And it's another thing that the drivers have to do. Well, it's the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 from Nashville. NASCAR Drive, that's your live race day companion. You can get access to high definition in car cameras, current position trackers, as well as pit stop data. You can visit NASCAR.com slash drive or you can download the NASCAR mobile app. 111 degrees inside the car here as we see it. Temperature rising as we look down on this mile and a third racetrack. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. This is the first time 
perhaps all weekend. We have had some thick clouds just roll in. The track mostly in the shade now, and that's another thing between the surface changing color because of the Goodyear tires putting rubber down on the concrete and the shade will continue to move the balance around. That's just becomes even more difficult, Parker, for the drivers to give good feedback, not to mention the conditions. Yes, and talking about those conditions, obviously coming this weekend, everyone was very much worried about the heat. It was super hot yesterday. Remember, we saw real field temps of 107 at some points. And just before the race, Ross Chastain had an interesting moment with his cool suit. A lot of these drivers are running cool suits to try and stay cool in these temps. Some running for the first time. So here you see he's actually putting on that cool suit. And actually, it's just a shirt. So it's only the top side. And that shirt has a bunch of tubes running through it that connects to a box inside the race car that it runs a water and fluid through. It. It basically cools you on your body and it can cool your temperature a, a tremendous amount when it's working. But a lot of drivers had issues with these cool suits. There's a couple manufacturers out there and they can get messed up from either having just particles in the fluid, it gets clogged. And so his shirt before was not letting the fluid go through. He took it off, changed it, got in the car, and it's working so far. Well, we heard Denny Hamlin say in the pre race that this will be the first race in this car that he has chosen to run that cool suit. He loves to run without it. He likes to think he's tough enough to do it, but his crew chief and him had a conversation, and I think his crew chief convinced him not that not, today is not the day to prove your toughness. Joe Logano wore one at Sonoma, and he says he's not gonna run the rest, he won't run the rest of his career without one. It's such a massive difference. The cool, it cools your entire torso uh, a tremendous amount, a massive difference, and very, very comfortable, and it really makes you so much better mentally to the end of the race. This is Advanced Auto Parts, camera on Ryan Blaney's car. Great shot back to Ryan Blaney. You see that hose on the top of his helmet. That's bringing cool, fresh air into his helmet, also cooling him. Hugely important. If you would wonder why would they not wear that cool suit all the time if it makes the driver better, there's weight involved in it. And crew chiefs do not want to add weight to the car. That can hurt the performance of it. So they don't like that, but it makes the driver better. Good battle here for second as we see Kyle Larson just in front of Daniel Suarez. Kyle Larson, a driver who was begging his crew chief to put in a different type of cool suit. But the reason that Cliff Daniels was a little bit hesitant was because it weighed six pounds more. And Steve, as a crew chief, six pounds in a car, that's a lot to have to deal with. Yeah, listen, it's all its all a competitive advantage in the light of the car. Cliff Daniels, just a reminder, not here today. Kyle Larson loses that wheel at Sonoma, so Cliff is on suspension. I'm sure he's watching and calling this race from the control center back at Hedger Motorsports. Daniel Suarez goes by. You saw the hand out the window for Larson, kind of waving Suarez by. Tail, you mentioned it earlier, track house. I mean, I don't, I'm running out of accolades. I'm running out of reasons why they're good. They are just consistent. In a year of inconsistency, this, it first started with the one, but now it is great to see the 99 of Suarez kind of join his teammate being up front. Dave. Hey, Steve, maybe it was the fact that the pep talk from Cliff Daniels had to come from afar, and the one from Travis Mack to driver Daniel Suarez came from right here at the Speedway. Listen. All right, guys. Coming off a win. I'll take it two in a row. You felt good uh, last two weeks, so let's do it again. Why not, right? We have the car capable of doing it. You guys already did the work, so let's go. I guess the pep talk was from the driver as well. Why not do it again? You see on the Tootsies cam there, he's gotten by Kyle Larson, now trying to put some distance between himself and the driver of the five. And trying to reel in Denny Hamlin. He has a 3.3 second advantage. 27 laps complete out of the 90 lap first stage. Uh, fuel window, 65 to 70 laps for these cars. So if we continue to see green flag racing, we will have to see green flag stops in the first stage. None of these stages today uh, will be able to run on one tank of gas. So a lot of pit stops and perhaps see some green flag action. And behind Daniel Suarez, we see Kyle Larson learned in third place, dominated this race last year. He's kind of pushing that groove. I've seen him really moving higher and higher, trying to see if he can make lap time, trying to rubber that race tra track in up top. See how high he is? Yeah, the only problem I'm seeing is that really a lot of guys have moved up the racetrack, but I don't know a lot 
have found speed up there. They're only going up there because the balance of the race cars in this first run is a little bit tight, Marty. But you got an 18. Well, Junior, the Toyota driver update will tell you that Kyle Busch is quick. Look at that, 36 to 15 for Kyle Busch. And yes, proving what Ben Bayshore told me before the race, I don't see any reason why the car would be any different Friday in practice coming up through the field as you ride on board with Kyle Busch. Jeff, I think that's a testament to how hard this car is to drive. You've mentioned it throughout the weekend. When Kyle Busch is wrecking and qualifying, that says something about this next-gen car. Well, it also says something about it. This is the same car they wrecked. They didn't have to get the backup out last year. That's the backup car. They were able to fix this car, and it's still fast. And all those drivers are going to say that it's difficult to pass. Don't tell Kyle Busch. He's passing a ton of them. <laughs> That's right. Kyle Busch started at the back of the field. He's all the way up to 15th. Now we're seeing Mark Trex Jr. trying to get by Joey Logano here on the outside. Yeah, and a huge week for Mark Trex Jr. A lot of conversation all year long. What's he going to do? Was he going to return? Was he not? And uh, very simply, three words, right, Rick? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. That's well <laughs> said for Mark Trex Jr. Excited to see the champ back in the 19 again next year. On board with Joey Logano, another champ with the Coca-Cola onboard camera. Yeah, this is a great camera shot to really show us as Martin was going by the platform of the car and uh, the rear diffuser and how close to the ground they try to get that for that rear downforce. Still out front, he's led every lap. Denny Hamlin, dominant early in that. Super Speedway race fans, I'm Jesse Punch. I'll be bringing you live updates all race long from down here on Pitt Road. You may have just heard on the broadcast, Kyle Busch, he started this race dead last in the 36th position. He's up to 15th already early on in stage one. No surprise to see Kyle gaining that position though, given the amount of experience he has on this racetrack. And not only experience, but wins. Two wins in the truck series and two wins in the Xfinity series. Now granted, this is a new car, this is a new series for Kyle when it comes to racing here, so having that bit of track knowledge is definitely helpful. I should also note when it comes to track conditions, we're seeing a lot of different changes down here with heat, with cloud coverage. I want to mention there was not a reapplication of traction compound last night either. The traction compound was applied pretty much from the base to the top of the racetrack to start the weekend, and we've seen two races on it already, so definitely something to keep an eye on as track conditions are actively changing down here quickly early on in the race. in my home state of Tennessee. Hope you're enjoying NASCAR on NBC. I That's a Dolly Parton's hit song, Run. We appreciate everything Dolly has done for NBC. As we see the one going by the five, so now Ross Chastain in front of Kyle Larson. So it's Hamlin, Suarez, Chastain, Larson, the top four. Christopher Bell has moved up into the fifth spot now. See him in the 20 
back there. And Parker, how's the 45 doing? See Kurt Busch here running, trying to get by Kevin Harvick here for ninth place. I spoke to Kurt before the race, and he said we have a solid car. We showed that in practice. We didn't quite nail it in qualifying, but we feel like we have the race car. You see him make a huge amount of ground here on Kevin Harvick, that Monster Energy car. And he also had this recently to say on the radio. Take a listen. I heard wheels tell me how to drive from back at the shop. I got it. Therefore. So I think he's mentioning uh, Mike Wheeler, general manager at 2311 race team there, telling him how to drive. I'm, I'm not sure to go with that one, guys. You take it away, trying to decipher that one for me. It tells me that Kurt Busch has had a lot of conversation. He told Jeff and I on NASCAR America Motor Mouse about how he had to drive this car differently, right, Jeff? How he had to attack the corner. And then it took him a few weeks to kind of believe what Danny Hamlin, Mike Wheeler, competition director, had been telling him, but it worked at Kansas. What I heard right there, Jeff, is a conversation they have been having week in and week out, and he must have almost reminded himself and gave Wheels credit, who's not on the radio, by the way, but Kurt's hearing it in his own head. That's a good sign when the driver remembers the conversations on his own. Well, there's so much data that the crew chiefs and engineers can look at to relay back to that driver. And when they see another driver up, oh, see trouble right here with the 77 of Josh Balicki. Yeah, slow on the racetrack. Josh Balicki goes down to the apron. Looks like all the tires are up. Best we can tell. Up, cycle the whole power system off and then back on. Talking about the power, so I don't know if he's lost electrical power or the engine just to shut off. We'll have to see. This is off turn two. I'm not sure he's going to make it all the way back around. This could be the caution that some of these cars have needed to get on pit road and make adjustments. There it is. Sure enough, there it is. Caution number one has come out. That's a big break for Harrison Burton, who was about to get lapped. And Cole Custer, the first car, a lap down. More than likely, Cole Custer will be that free pass recipient, putting 28 cars on the lead lap. I think whatever issue the 77 had, they he resolved it by cycling the the engine or the power. There were some teams excited that he didn't resolve it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. At least hey, early uh, good news is it's fixed. Bad news is uh, we're not sure what it was. So now it's yeah. fixed. You hope that it's not an issue that will continue. But now, 42 laps on this set of tires. You're inside your fuel window to make it to the end of the first stage. Pit Road is going to be a busy, busy place. 27 cars on the lead lap. As you pointed out, Cole Custer would be a little bit of a lucky break, maybe get his lap back. But 27 cars pitting at once. A little bit of patience in and out of the pit boxes. So the 7 and 77 out of the same uh, shop there, Spire Motorsports, is there a nervousness there as far as will the 7 be in the same situation, thinking there might be an issue? Lightning in the air. Oh, and we're just hearing a lightning strike within seven miles of the racetrack. Uh, and we learned, obviously, from a lot of the NASCAR officials earlier, it's a this is a universal thing across sporting events and venues around the country. Uh, lightning strikes anywhere inside of the eight mile radius of any sporting event uh, calls for a mandatory 30 minute delay, uh, 30 minute stoppage in action. And so that will have to take place now. We told you at the top of the show there's weather in the area. They were expecting it to be raining hard there. Thankfully, uh, as we were looking at the radar, it somewhat split the racetrack, but there is you know, a lot of thunderstorms in the area. There you see a look at the radar. Uh, it looked like it was going to split and miss us, but a lightning strike did happen within uh, that inner circle. And so we will have a red flag condition. They bring the cars down onto pit road. Yeah, for all we know, that might have been the reason for the caution. I, I, I just was thinking that a 77 car, okay. Now we're hearing the caution was for the, the 77. Didn't think he was going to be able to make it around, but did get it fired up in turn three. This is just unfortunate. But, yeah, we all were anticipating this weather to, to delay this race entirely, so I feel like we're really fortunate that we've got sort of the weather went, went around us, but we'll have a short delay here and hopefully be back to action. Yeah, 41 laps completes already. Denny Hamlin has led all 41 of those, but a red flag condition now for Lightning here in Nashville. Drivers back inside their cars. They're about ready to fire them back up as the crews are making sure everything is right uh, with those drivers when they get in there. Want to take a look at the scoring pylon on the left side of the screen and get you caught up as to what is going on. You see that they're all obviously on pit road, but the comers and goers have already 
started to happen here in just 41 laps. Yeah, Jeff mentioned it. The Toyotas look strong, and uh, Bubba Wallace, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Truex, all those guys moving forward. Some guys, though, dropping back, Jeff. Yeah, several Fords, Eric Amarola, Logano, Cole Custer, they've lost 14, 12, 10 spots. So those guys go on the wrong way. You mentioned Bubba Wallace, so we talk a lot about stars, right? No big surprise Kyle Busch has driven up to 15th. But a tip of the hat to Bubba Wallace. You're going to keep up with Kyle Busch at a track like this, working through traffic, an impressive maneuver out of the driver of the 23 all the way up. He's right on Kyle Busch's heels in 16th, so that's an impressive run. He had the fastest car in practice, and then with the issues in qualifying, we wondered whether that speed was real. Looks like it is. Cole Custer will be the free pass after we get going here. NASCAR has everybody had their pit stops and so forth. So now what's important is that you got to get your mind back in this racing. You have been out of this car for a long time. It's been hot. You got to get yourself refocused. What's the first thing you got to do? You're going to come on pit road here. You've got to do everything right. We talk a lot about pit crews. You just show the, the lug nut, how they've had problems. The driver getting the car in the box, out of the box. There's going to be still a lot of cars on lead lap. A lot of cars are going to be on pit road at the same time. You got to get your brain back into this race and get this pit stop done. And if I'm a pit crew coach I'm, or a crew chief, I'm getting my pit crew together because the other thing, aluminum wheels, steel lug nut. These cars have sat and kind of heat soaked. So you kind of get into the rhythm of how tight these lug nuts are. This might be an 80 percenter. Guys, go nice and easy. Get the lug nut off and get it on. Let's not trip up here at the first pit stop of the race after sitting for a little bit of time. Let's make sure we're ready to go. The crowd hasn't left though, Rick. It looks no, good. they're back in the grandstands. They were asked to leave, obviously, when the lightning strike happened. But they're back, and they are raucous right now because the engines fired back up here in Nashville. And they're looking forward to hearing not only the roar of the engines, but also the fans cheering for the drivers, especially guys like Hamlin and Suarez, who are top two right now. Marty. Hey, Rick, as you mentioned, engines have fired. I talked to Denny Hamlin before he climbed in the race car. He said, our car was so good, but once we hit traffic, it got way different. He said, I know, though, we are going to be racing our teammates very soon. What stood out to him is what you guys just mentioned a moment ago. Kyle Busch coming up through the field, Bubba Wallace. He said, it's not going to be long, and the race, in my opinion, is going to be between us Toyotas this afternoon. But, Steve, here's a question a lot of drivers were wondering about. How much is this track going to change? Usually concrete tracks don't change a ton with the weather, but it is drastically cooler now with this cloud cover than when the race started. Well, we continue to talk about what makes this track difficult. One big thing is, regardless of the car, you can make up all the stories wrong. It's still only the second time the Cup cars have been here. So your notebook is just it's just not very thick. You know, you go to the 600, the track changes a lot. Well, you run it every year. So you have a lot of notes to lean back on. Here at Nashville, not a lot. And, you know, the other high-speed concrete track being Dover, doesn't really have lights, so it, you know, I'm not sure where you're gonna search to answer that question. And Steve, it's a totally different car. A yeah. totally different race car. I mean, they did race here a year ago on this surface, but the car is completely different. So that notebook that they had from a year ago, you know, really how much of it can you use? You see Denny down on the apron. And working his way back up onto the track, but as soon as everyone is rolling and in position, they will open up pit road and allow them to come down to the service of their crews. Rick, one thing that we saw in yesterday's race and in the truck race is these tires pick up a lot of debris, tire debris that's on the racetrack. So one of the things you got to do as a driver, we talked about being ready, is you need to get those things cleaned off the best you can. So when you get onto pit road, you can, you can brake as hard as possible. Those tires are dirty have that rubber built up on them, they're not going to stop, and they could slide through a pit box. Crews getting ready for the cars to come back down to pit road and come into their pit boxes. And you see them. I mean, they're working these tires, just like you said, Jeff. They're cleaning tires, knowing they're going to come down pit road and take these off. But they are aggressively trying to clean the tires so they can get into those stalls and get get a pit, stall, a pit stop done quickly. You never see them weaving when they know they're getting ready to put a new tire on. <laughs> but this car is so different. There's all kinds of new things that we're going to be seeing. Very fortunate to have some great onboard shots today. This one's with Ryan Blade, the Advanced Auto Parts bumper cam. He hopes that thing stays on there all day. <laughs> well, here's the Ford Performance onboard camera. Chase Briscoe in that 14 car. 
Another great look right down along the surface. AJ Amendinger, Goldfish Casino camera. Got his thermostat in there. Thermometer will be checking that out throughout the day. We can switch to Celsius. You're going to have to do a conversion for us. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Bush in the Toyota camera. Dale Jr., I'm assigning you Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion. I'm on it. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Joey Lacano's Coca Cola cam. Again, one of these great low shots. Ricky Stenhouse and Edmonds. This is a great helmet cam, and uh, surprisingly, Rick has eaten every donut they delivered to us the other day. And then Daniel Suarez with his Tootsie's cam back on the right rear quarter panel by the spoiler. Well, we talked about it, pit stops. Here they go. Off the banking, onto pit road. Parker coming at you. Right, and Ross Chastain will pit from the third position in that American flag looking car at the top of your screen. He complained of the car just being too tight on that run, but he said, I'm able to get to the throttle harder than I have all weekend. And you saw him moving forward. You see that adjustment in the right rear four feet your tires don't go fuel, Dave. His teammate Daniel Suarez overshot his marks just a little bit, but he is in the pit box. Four good year tires and Sunoco fuel mark, no changes. In the top of how far you go with the adjustments, that was on the mind of interim crew chief Sam McCauley for Denny Hamlin. So they're gonna go really conservative here, make no changes to the car, clearly up front leading all those laps in Hamlin. It'll be a tight race off pit road, but he wins it. And that was close. It looked like they were working a little bit longer on the right rear of Hamlin. So the field will line back up and we'll go back to racing here at Nashville Super Speedway. The race is back underway here from Nashville Super Speedway and that 99 of Daniel Suarez, the second coming off pit road, will restart on the front row next to Denny Hamlin. That 99 team is coming off their very first win two weeks ago at Sonoma and I talked to Daniel after that Sonoma win. He told me, he said the first one is always the hardest, but now that it's out of the way, he absolutely expects there to be more. We have seen a stellar performance from both track house teams all season long, both drivers finding victory lane. And with Daniel Suarez having finished this race seventh last year and coming off the momentum of a win, we can definitely expect to see a strong run today from that 99 team. the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 from Nashville Super Speedway. We talked about pit road being a busy place and short on real estate. Watch this right here. You're on board the 18, turns in Jackman, Kellen Mills, vertical. That's over the hood, over the right front fender. It was either get hit or get up in the air. It was crazy. You see some laughter. Let's listen in to what they had to say on the radio. Dicey, it was. Nice work. I agree. Dicey. That right there 
some athleticism on display. Rick, you and I, what did that hit? I'm pretty confident. <laughs> They're in the jack, he did that. Yeah. All right. Fans on their feet once again as we get ready to go back to racing field approaching the Geico restart zone. It's Hamlin and Suarez making up pro one. Missing from the front of the field, the one of Ross Chastain had to pit a second time, lost all that track position. Great start for Hamlet and the 12 of Ryan Blaney trying to hug that yellow line on the inside. Martin Trex Jr. making a lot of spots on the outside there in the third groove. He's going to try to go for some more there, Jr. Yeah, Still he is. three wide. I think, you know, that first restart was really calm, really tame. A little contact there between teammates. Chase Elliott in the nine car in the middle of the sandwich. The 24, Byron, still a little bit out of control. Way up Way the way issue. Track. Could be an issue with that car, that contact. Stop here, way top. Way top, just staying up there. Remember, we staying talked to him earlier, three and he four, had an issue four. before the caution, said it felt funny down the straightaway. They hoped it was a tire. The left side tires look aired up. I can't tell on the rights. Maybe that yeah, issue. Broke, guys, I can't drive it this way. It's really bad. Okay, broke. So we, I, it, that's either that contact, Junior, you mentioned, or before the delay, he said he had an issue. William Byron, one of the drivers with two wins already this season, so he's still in the play. Big, 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 big crash in one and two, the 48 of Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman had just been on pit road. All right, dead center. He stayed on pit road a long time, trying to make changes to this car to improve the handling on it, lost some track position because of it. Now they're in a wreck. And in two minutes, Hendrick Motorsports loses two of their four entries in the race. He's going to try to drive that one back, but oh. look at all the damage. Destroyed, buddy. The right front tire coming apart, shredding the body pieces on that car. Oh, and Byron takes the left-hand turn into the garage. Remember, he said he had an issue earlier. I'm not sure if it was that we or contact. Debris continues fault. to come off the 48. Let's look at this 24, Junior. So a little bit of contact. Not sure if this is what gave him his problem because it looked very minor right there. But then as he gets down the straightaway and goes into one, there's a big wiggle. The car, the steering right there, you can see him out of the gas. See that wobble right there? Not sure exactly what he's feeling or what's going on with the car. Yeah, I have to believe this is what he was feeling earlier. You could see a little concern in that interview. The car felt funny, and then here's his teammate, the 48, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, excuse me, Jimmy Johnson. I'm going back five years. Alex Bowman. Got the right sponsor, Ally. Can't tell if there's contact. That's Corey LaJoy behind him. I can't tell if there's contact either. I think the first look, we had a better look at it as they went down into turn one. He said he, 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 was, he stayed on pit road for a long time with the hood up, making some adjustments. They were really struggling, falling back through the field before that caution. Right front tire tear and oh. the right front fender off as it's coming apart. Look at that thing bounces up and down, how rough it is in that car. All right, so let's just take a look. As we roll in here, we're going to see him. So if we freeze it, He's already backwards as he comes into the picture. It's too hard to tell. So look at the, the the sevens going up the track. I don't know if he's going to avoid or the contact. He's correcting from the contact that might have happened. We'll keep listening in on the radio. Maybe have a little bit of an insight there. Parker. Oh, guys, you were correct. He came down and did that shock adjustment in the front end of that car. That was a long stop that put them in the back there because he was not handling, happy with the handling of the car. But as you saw there, you were sort of paying attention to the seven. Take a listen to what Alex had to say on the radio. Pretty cool. Well, Corey LaJoy is a really good race car driver. The sarcastic comment about Corey, I guess that Alex feels like Corey had a problem with that. Let's listen to what, what the seven has to say. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Did not mean to do that. Thought he was committed to the second lane. Stand for. That's Corey's side of the story. He said he thought he was committed to the second lane. What that tells me is he drove underneath of Bowman, and Bowman started coming down, and Corey wasn't expecting him to be there. So here's a good look at it. We'll be able to see exactly what happened. Yeah, that's that's. Corey just didn't think he was, he thought he was going to run the second lane, so Corey drove it in the corner deeper, 
Bowman comes down the racetrack, they make contact. And that's right around that area. You don't want to speculate too much, but right around that area where they're downshifting, hand off the wheel, a lot going on in the car. So quickly, things have changed for Hendrick Motorsports. The 24 out and the 48, a lot of damage. Back under caution here at Nashville Super Speedway. Quick note, you may have heard earlier on the broadcast, the five team missing in a very important member of their crew this week. The crew chief, Cliff Daniels, is out for a tire penalty last week, but one team that's happy to have their crew chief back on the box is the 31 of Colleg Racing. As you see, Justin brings it in here to the pits right now, calling the shots back on the box from a four Weak suspension. Trent Owens is back as crew chief for that 31 team. Again, that's a tire penalty that'll get you out of this race. So, given the small notebook that these teams have for the track like Nashville, having that crew chief back here today is definitely big for the 31 team. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Sonic. This is how we Sonic. Toyota, let's go places. And by Ally, do it right. Another great crowd on hand here at Nashville Super Speedway. Just the second time that the Cup Series has been to this mile and a third concrete oval. And out of the car now in the garage is William Byron. Dave's with him. Yeah, I reckon just catching up with William. That was weird. Was it the same weird thing we talked about in the rain delay and the lightning delay? Yeah, I mean, it was exactly the same thing. I, I was having issues with the steering right before the caution uh, for the rain delay and thought it might have been a tire. Uh, but right when I started getting strapped in before, like the steering was something was off and the steering rack was broken. So uh, went off on the restart, was trying to do like stay off of guys on the restart. Literally, the steering was just like there was nothing. So I was just kind of going where the car naturally was going. So. Definitely uh, not ideal, but we'll get this Valvoline Chevrolet fixed up and try to go make some laps. Unfortunate that that happened, but, you know, we'll learn from it. Out for the moment. Nothing we could do. Yeah. Tough day so far, Parker. Right, Dave. And we saw Ross Chastain had to go to the back there for that last restart. It was a loose right rear wheel for them, so they came down and tightened that up. We've seen a lot of these wheel issues throughout this season. You don't want that wheel falling off. Luckily enough for them, they're able to get on pit road, tighten it up, and we'll see how fast that one car is. He's right now in 24th, going to have to drive through the field to get back to the top five. Once again, the choose rule in effect here, and Denny has chosen that inside line once again, and Suarez will be on the outside. We noted the ch changes to Harvick's pit crew. They had the fastest stop on that last cycle, and now he's in third place. Running up front, you see the four, Kevin Harvick on the outside of him will be Brian Blake, and the field approaching the Geico restart zone once again. Hamlin has had great restarts. 
All race. What a run, though, on the outside. Look at Martin Trex Jr. in the 19. Just like the restart before, he's found some confidence up there on the restarts to go where the clean air is at. See what he does down here. It gets a little tougher when you get closer to the front to really make that work. Blaney out of the gas. Trex with a run on Suarez for second. More contact back here. Chase Elliott, man, he's been busy on these restarts. Martrex Jr. uses that high line, keeping the momentum up. And he's going to try to get second away from Daniel Suarez as he goes to the outside. The Toyotas are hot tonight. Down into three, just about clears the 99. Should have the momentum off the corner. Suarez fighting back, though. Going to maintain this battle down the front straightaway. See the fire coming out of the exhaust pipes on these cars. That shows you when they lift off the gas. Pass completed by Martin Trex Jr. He's up to second. Suarez back to third. Hamlin two wins already in 2022, but his teammate Martin Trex Jr. still looking for his first win of this season. We see the side-by-side -side racing here. Kyle Larson just to the outside of Christopher Bell. Yeah, Larson started up front, and he's trying to fend off another. Yes, Toyota that's driving up through the field, this 20-car Christopher Bell. These two guys have raced each other their whole lives all through the ranks. Bell's going to take the spot. See what Larson has to say about it on corner exit. He tries to get down in front of his teammate here, Chase Elliott. Ducks in behind the 20, and Marty, what's the communication like on the 19 team right now? Well, I, I want to know who's behind the wheel of the 19. Junior, did you give Martin Truex Jr. a lesson on the high line? Because throughout his career, he has never liked to run the high line. He's always been a bottom feeder on the racetrack, but he told James Small, his crew chief, before this last restart, I think I'm going to do that again, meaning go to that very high line, make some passes. You know it, Junior. Truex has never been known to go to the top, but he's made it work early. Yeah, you just have to imagine the, the, the concerns about his future and what his decision was going to be with that in the mirror and everything out front. He's here to race and feel it good about it. Got a wreck. Got a wreck. Two cars caught up in it. One of them. Chase Briscoe in the 14, the other Ty Dillon in the 42. And the caution comes out once again. Damage to the nose of the 42 car. See if you can fire it, This is the kind of thing that Ty Dillon in that 42 has avoided most of the year. Been very consistent. I don't know how much damage either one of these cars has. AMR team quickly on the scene. Both, both these guys able to drive away. Right here, they enter in turn one. Ross, Ross Chastain making a move. Remember, he had to start in the back with that lug nut problem. He made the 14 sort of block that move down the front straightaway, and the 14 enters shallow. And the 14, Briscoe loses the back just a little bit as Ty Dillon's kind of coming down the racetrack. Ty's doing nothing wrong, but Ty's coming down the track. The 14 needs a little room when he starts to chase the back of that car, and up into the door of the 42 he goes. So this is a very, very shallow entry, only to block the one behind him. Well, I'm too fast, I'm too fast, I'm too fast, I'm spinning out. Up into the 42 he goes. I was trying to listen on board there. You had mentioned a couple times, you know, was his hand off the wheel. We keep talking about the shifting. I think the act of shifting isn't that difficult with the lever forward and backward, but now you're down in the middle of the corner running 150 miles an hour trying to judge this, and you have to take your right hand off the wheel. It gets to be very difficult. I'd love to know if he was in the middle of a downshift at that point. That whole idea of downshifting into the braking zone, I never loved it. We did this at Pocono for years, and downshifting with your hand off the wheel and braking into a corner, all of those things like patting your belly or rubbing your belly and patting your head. I mean, you can't do it. <laughs> I can never do it. I always try to downshift early, but you cannot do that in these cars. You have to drive the car down into the corner, Marty. 
Boy, Joe Logano, not the speed they expected today. Started on the front row, and he's kind of gone backwards. He said that last run, they fired off tight, but the car started coming to him. So Paul Wolf kind of making a call to do something different than everybody else, bringing Logano down pit road, and I believe the only lead lap car that came down pit road. Admit it, everyone, you're all trying to rub your belly and pat your head right now. <laughs> I, that, you know, breaking into a corner plus downshift, that's just a lot going on right there for these guys. And every single one of them is doing it down in the corner. I mean, they're they're getting used to it, but it's definitely throwing a new element in. We saw the 22 of Logano and the 6 of Keselowski both make their way onto pit road. This was the reason for the caution. Chase Briscoe, Ty Dillon getting into it. Turns 1 and 2. Back under caution here at Nashville Super Speedway. That 12 of Ryan Blaney starting fourth here on the restart. Now Ryan's still looking for his first win of the season, but he does have two top 10 finishes in the last two races. So again, still a number of playoff spots to lock in as we have 10 more regular season races before the start of the playoffs. And that 12 team hoping to officially lock themselves in, not have to worry about points, but consistent runs will get them where they need to be start the playoffs. Looking back off the Coca-Cola Pace truck cam and the field lined up behind him getting ready for a restart. Only 25 laps to go in stage one. Again, there was a lightning delay that put everyone on pit road for about an hour. The 11 car of Denny Hamlin has been dominant. He has led 64 laps up to this point. But now Martin Trex Jr. on the outside and he has been having great restarts. Can he do it again here? and had a great restart from the outside. Hamlin gave him, I think, exactly what he wanted. Now he's getting a big push by Blaney down into turn one. Look at him go. My goodness, that zips around. Flew by the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And Hamlin back to second for the first time in this race. Hamlin said he was going to be racing his teammates. Truex Jr. without a win in 2022. Denny Hamlin has two wins. Just behind him, Ryan Blaney, another driver without a win yet. Harvick running in fourth also hasn't won in 2022. Moving to the inside, you see the nine of Chase Elliott trying to get by the 99 of Daniel Suarez. Three wide. Nine almost on the apron, was running out of real estate quickly. He's going to come back to the inside of the 99.
Dave, what's happening with Chase Elliott? Good things, and the good thing is that there was no real damage from that contact with his teammate, William Byron. The car's been pretty well balanced all day, and you can see he completes that pass on Daniel Suarez at this point, putting him up into the eighth position. So far, so good, Marty. Dave, look who's knocking on the door of the top 10, Kyle Busch, from last to 11th, but a little concern with his cool shirt that he's wearing. Listen. So the cool shirt looks good. Like, my core is nice, but my butt feels hot, and the bottom of my legs feel hot from the exhaust of the cool shirt device. It is freaking hot. So, Steve, I asked Nate Bellows, the car chief, about that, and he said, no, we run it almost every week. Anytime it's over 80, Kyle would like to have that cool shirt on, and the uh, box itself is in the same exact position it's always in. He said, I think this is by far the toughest test for this new car with this heat, and that's really what he's feeling more than anything else. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt. Just the ambient temperature is the highest by far. All these drivers had so much history. We talk about notebooks for setups. Well, drivers had notebooks for comfort, what they wanted in the car so they could feel comfortable over the course of the race. We'll have some notes after this one as we see the one of Ross Chastain still trying to recover from that issue on pit road inside the 47 of Stenhouse. These are two tough race car drivers here. Well, look how that one car can wrap the bottom just by distance alone, able to clear the 47. Chastain had been running up in the top three before he had to come to pit road for a second time and lost all of his track position. Fighting to get that back now. Parker. Well, guys, if we go up to the top five and look at Kevin Harvick, who's running in fourth just before this last caution. He came on the radio and said, I'm better than the 12th car. I just can't find a way around him. And I talked to Kevin under the red flag and asked him, is that top lane coming in? He said, eh, maybe. We'll see if I can get up there. And you see him following the tire tracks of Blaney. Look for him to maybe start getting to that higher lane and see if he can make some speed up there and use the speed of that fourth car to get by the 12th. Guys, what I'm starting to see is there's two types of good cars here in Nashville, right? There are cars like the four of Kevin Harvick who says it's driving fine. He just can't seem to pass. Then there's cars like the 19 of Trix, who's currently the leader, who has a good car, but it's flexible. He can go high, he can go low. That's like the next step. That's the next step from your race car, having some flexibility to move around. That allows traffic to be much more manageable. Chastain up to 16th now as he just went by the two of Austin Cindric. And you can see Cindric a little frustrated with how how the, the one car of Chastain kind of pulled in front of him on the front straightaway thinking, I'm clear. Well, no, you're not, pal. And I'm not real happy about it. Everybody seems to be, uh, you know, even if nothing's happened between them and Chastain, they seem to be annoyed by the guy when they're around when he's around them. We mentioned that Ross Chastain has ruffled a few feathers on the way to two wins. This is what you were just talking about. Yeah. So the one, hey, I'm not clear, but the two gets in here behind him, pushing him down the straightaway. But the wonder, I mean, there was, they have raced against each other in Xfinity Series. They could have a, a history from way back. Or the two could have just simply been pushing him down the straightaway. Eric Jones way up the racetrack right there in three and four. Not sure that was by design. Oh, I agree. That was higher than I think he was hoping to be. We mentioned the move of Kyle Busch after starting in the back. Well, Darrell Wallace, Bubba Wallace Jr., was also back there, and he's just in front of Kyle Busch. So Bubba Wallace looking pretty strong as he's moved up into the top ten in that ninth spot. Yeah, somebody with an opposite story, Daniel Suarez, restarted third. He's all the way back to 11th. Good battle right here. If you'd have told me on Friday that Kevin Harvick would be racing Ryan Blaney for third place, I'd have said there's no way. He didn't have 30th place speed in his car. Made some great changes to it. Qualified well and still running well today. Look at this. Harvick looking to the inside. These two Fords fighting for position. Blaney right now has that third spot. Harvick trying to move up and take it away from him. Parker. You see Kevin Harvick dive to the bottom there in turn one and two. What is Blaney fighting as he falls in the clutch of the four car? Tight, really tight. Has come on the radio and just complained that he cannot get the front tires to grip inside that 12 car right now. As you see him move up the racetrack, just trying to find any way to get that race car to turn and hold off the four Kevin Harvick right now. Blaney's got third. Harvick fighting for it. Truex Jr. out in front of the field here at Nashville.
Looking down on the mile in the third thanks to Geico. That's our aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. And the gap had closed to about two car lengths. Now Martin Truex Jr. after passing a lap car has put about four car lengths between he and second place Denny Hamlin. But Hamlin has been chipping away at that lead. Dale Jr. This goes back to exactly what you and Jeff talked about when we looked at the playoff standings and the lack of playoff points, right? A playoff point will be awarded for the stage win. Truex is just looking for a win for some sort of assurance to be in the playoffs. Hamlin with those two wins, he is looking to fill that bucket up, trying to get by his teammate. These two have drove away from third place battle Blaney and Harvick, but right behind Harvick and Blaney, Christopher Bill, these two guys, his teammate, Christopher Bill is driving up through the field as well. Joe Gibbs racing, putting on a clinic today, Marty. Well, no offense to Steve Jr., but sometimes it helps when your crew chief is a driver. Even the interim crew chief for Denny Hamlin, Sam McCauley, former driver, Legends car driver, normal crew chief, was a former driver, too. He heard Martin Truex Jr. say he was loose. He said, take advantage of it immediately on the radio to Denny. His right rear is going to be too warm. Let the house now. I like that. Take advantage. You know you, somebody has a weakness. How do you take advantage of it? That's the question. Truex is up there running on the top lane. It's not like you're going to be able to get on the outside of Truex to try to make him looser. Truex will make this pass really difficult. Marty, that was a great point to bring up uh, when a crew chief says pounce on him. Are, well, a lot of people are thinking, well, they're teammates. Wait a minute, what do you mean pounce on him? When they have on race day, uh, each team is on their own. They are going out there to win for their team. And so the 11 sees an opportunity. They're going to try to take advantage of it. Denny changes his line to the top here, trying something new. That bottom was working. He's able to close now to the top to create a low momentum down this straightaway, slowly closing in. And Martin got that information about Denny Hamlin running higher. So now what does Martin do? Martin goes up the racetrack a little bit, trying to keep Denny from being out there. A little bit of maybe a fake by Denny going to the outside, really wanting the inside, making Martin respond to his move. I don't know how important this playoff point is to Martin, but we know it is important to Denny. He's mentioned it in interviews this week. He knows if he gets one, he's in the bleed of, uh, you know, as far as the playoff points in the state, in the, in, the, in the ranking of the drivers, he would have the most, even with the season he's had. Yeah, inconsistency for the 11 team, two wins already, but now just three laps to go in stage one. That was a pretty impressive defensive move by Truex a corner ago. Gonna shut that door off of the air. Cost 11, four or five car lengths. We'll see if Denny can mount a charge. Dives back in to the inside, trying to get back up to the back bumper of the 19. They're coming up on just two laps to go in stage one. And Hamlin just doesn't seem to be able to get closer. He tries that inside line. He closes the gap, but the momentum on the 19 side. Yeah, that high line's a bit of a defensive line when you're struggling like this. There he make, goes. It's going to make Denny do it on the bottom. And it's just, Denny can get there. He just can't quite defend the momentum that that 19 has down the straightaway from the top. One lap to go. How aggressive will Hamlin be here? To the bottom of the racetrack again. He's closed the gap. Trix will have the drive, though, off the corner. A great run here by Denny Hamlin. He's got three and four to go. To the inside, will it be enough as they come off turn four for the stage one win? It's gonna go to Martin Trex Jr. Fourth stage win already for Martin Trex Jr. But Wallace see. getting by Chase Elliott in the middle of three and four to take that seventh spot. Kyle Busch in front of brother Kurt Busch and the caution comes out after the top 10 have crossed the start finish line. So Mark Trex Jr. wins stage one, but it wasn't easy. A lot of pressure from teammate Denny Hamlin.
stage one is complete here at Nashville Super Speedway, and this cloud coverage that has rolled in has cooled down track temperatures significantly, but we're still hearing drivers complain about the heat inside of the cars. In fact, yesterday we saw temperatures upwards of 140 in the driver's seat, which puts into perspective just what some of these drivers are doing this weekend. Guys like AJ Allmendinger in the 16 team, he ran the Xfinity Series race yesterday. That's 250 miles in the heat and then strapped up to run this race today. He actually got out of the car yesterday and was complaining of blisters on his feet because it was so hot there in the driver's seat. Got out, fell to the ground, put ice on those feet, and returned today to run this race. That's a potential 650 miles in this heat for AJ Allmendinger. Definitely can't underestimate what these drivers are doing out here this weekend. Download the official app of NASCAR. Follow the action with free live scoring in car cameras as well as radio broadcast. Search NASCAR in your app store and download and start a free trial. Another great crowd here at Nashville Super Speedway and good finish there for stage one as Martin Trex Jr. was able to hold off Denny Hamlin as the field about to make their way onto pit road now. Parker. Ryan Blaney did an awesome job to hold off Kevin Harvick there to finish third in the stage with a very tight race car. He moved his lineup to the top, so they're going to hopefully make some adjustments here. It's going to be Ford your tires for the 12 car and get those adjustments in through air pressure and help loose them up, Marty. Parker, this ought to be good head to head with the JGR pit crews on pit road for Martin Truex Jr. Fourth stage win of the year. Those are the only playoff points that he owns. Four of them at this point. Really loose off turn four for his teammate, Denny Hamlin. Junior's right. He told me earlier this week, Second in the stage means nothing to me. All we're after are playoff points. In fact, when it was over, he said, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't get that done for you. He said, I got the entry where I wanted it, but the exit is really hurting. Hamlin loses a ton of spots here on pit road. Logano, two tires, gained 17 positions. Remember, Rick, they pitted in the middle of stage one there. And a two-tire stop strategy being played on pit road. 17 spots gained.
We are moments away from getting stage two started here at Nashville Super Speedway. Take a look at that running order as we get ready to take the green. There's a number of drivers in the top 10 that are still looking to get win number one this season. The 12 of Ryan Blaney, the four of Kevin Harvick, who we know is definitely looking for that win. He's on a winless streak of over a season now. That 20 of Christopher Bell also in the top 10. And the 23 of Bubba Wallace currently in eighth. He's also hoping to get a win. And of course, a win would lock any of these guys into the playoffs as we have 10 regular season races left to go before things heat up at Daytona. Getting ready for the start of stage two. Before we do that, let's head back downtown in Nashville and go to Legends Corner where Rutt with City View. Rick, you can't talk about a, a correlation between country music and NASCAR without talking about this guy, Marty Robbins. Marty Robbins had 17 number one Billboard country hits, but you know what? He also loved racing. He raced in over 35 races, 35 cup races in NASCAR, but he loved racing at the Nashville Fairgrounds, so much so that when he was scheduled to be on the Grand Ole Opry, they would move him to the last set of the night so that he could go race, change his clothes, and then perform. The coolest thing to me is when I asked my buddy Kyle Petty, hey, what do you really like jump out about Marty Robbins he said well obviously he was a legend he was incredible he said but the king Richard Petty made me call him when I wanted to race the 42 and ask could I have that number back and Marty Robbins said oh of course that's Lee's number I know you want to run it so yeah I'll just run the six uh, unbelievable this guy loved racing loved country music so much and what a legend he was guys thanks Rut, and we appreciate all the hits from uh, Nashville the 10 team Eric Almarola for speeding on pit road and you mentioned it the 22 took two tires he had pitted a little bit later than most but still 25 laps on those left side tires we'll see how this works out for Lugano the entire field we'd be watching <laughs> yeah for sure Mark Truex Jr. will be on the outside Lugano on the inside for the restart here good push from Ryan Blaney on the 22 of Lugano and that gets Lugano out front Way up the racetrack goes Blaney chasing it. And now Logano trying to block as the 19's making the move on the outside again. Truex was able to stay on that quarter panel. Carries that speed down the back straightaway clear into the lead. Now Logano has his teammate on his outside. He doesn't want to lose too many positions here. We know he's got just two right side tires. You don't want to get too far back in traffic in dirty air with just two tires against four tires surrounding him. Look how clean the racetrack is. All the rubber got pulled up uh, during the caution. Harvick jumping on the outside of Denny Hamlin, making it three wide. Bubba Wallace continuing his march to the front. Denny Hamlin's first time he's been back this far. His car is going to drive completely different than it has all day long. In this dirty air, he's had clean air all day, running second and really at the worst. Now he has a completely different animal he's dealing with. You mentioned the 11 back in traffic and how it's going to change his car. The other thing is, you know, we had that little bit of delay. The clouds have come over. It's 10, 12 degrees cooler out. That's going to change the balance on some cars. Which the field is looking forward to change the 19. Man, he is unbelievable on this restarts. But you see it's all the way down to a chilly 84 degrees if you've been in Nashville this weekend. <laughs> Look at Blaney. Keep it pace with Truex in the 19. Short run speed on his 12 car. They seem to be improving this car with each time they're down pit road. Why not the 19 and the 12? The two guys just outside of the wind column. Why not have a run one, two? Yeah, two guys, two veterans that have wins under their belt, but not this year. So they haven't locked themselves into the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. out front, Blaney, and it's Logano, Christopher Bell, and Kyle Busch, the top five. Listen in to Truex's radio. Just try to manage your right rear here. Long run. Try. Feels like my, my back and off and get looser, though. That's my only worry. Yeah, copy on that. Use your judgment. You know more than me. Austin Cindric right there, he was falling back 
into the pack. He was had a good restart, but immediately started falling back. Obviously a problem. The 19 radio managed the right rear. That tells me that the 19 builds loose. They feel it either wear or heat on the right rear tire. So some direction of his team to try to not abuse that tire early. Uh, we'll see if he's able to do that while the pace in front of the 12. Watch this 18 car for third place. Ben running the top. He's going to go to the inside here on the 22 Logano. Try to wrap the bottom. Four tires on that 18 car down low. Two new right side tires on the top here. Here comes the 20, his teammate. Christopher Bell is going to try to help with an assist on Kyle Busch. Kyle dives down into the corner. Logano struggling to try to find pace with these tires. It's probably an experiment they might not repeat the rest of the race. He was struggling before, though. He was, did not have a fast race car. had fallen back into the field. So it's hard, it's hard for me to say right now that it's the two tires or just his car is it the way he wants it to be, Marty. Well, and Jeff, just keep in mind, they, they were running ninth when Paul Wolf made that move, middle of stage one, to come down, take on those four tires. And Steve, that really set up the two tire stop. So if you're going to experiment in a race as a crew chief, Steve, you want to do it in stage one. Now they'll have all this information to go back to later in the race. Yeah, and a crew chief, it isn't just, you know, 10 years ago, it was one move at a time. Now these crew chiefs are truly playing chess two or three moves ahead. So Paul Wolf put those tires on because it opened up the playbook. He was probably thinking two tires the whole time. And even if this doesn't work, he was 18, he's now fifth. Even if he falls back to say 10th before the pit cycle, it's still net gain and information as Marty points out. Good battle with Eric Jones and Kyle Larson. Eric Jones went to the bottom. Larson wanted that bottom, took the air away from him and way up the racetrack, Larson goes. Look how many spots it lost him. Gap continues to close now between race leader Martin Truex Jr. and Ryan Blaney. We'll see if Blaney has any better luck when he gets to the back bumper of Martin Truex Jr. than Denny Hamlin did at the end of stage one. There you see Harvick going by the 22 of Logano. Harvick takes that position from Joey in the 22 and behind them the 23 of Bubba Wallace. The 11, all those guys trying to chase down Joey's we see the battle for the lead as you mentioned Rick continue to tighten up Martin continues to run that high defensive line he likes the pace and the feel of the car up there and Blaney's going to try to go even higher little bump over the tunnel right there and the shift it's Trex Jr. up front here at Nashville Super Speedway Strong run right now for JGR as you see the 20 of Christopher Bell up there with his teammates. He's currently running fourth. Christopher's coming off a tough run at Sonoma. He finished 27th there, which ended a career long five race top 10 streak. He finished this race ninth last year and is still hoping for his first win of the season, which of course would lock him into the playoffs. But strong run right now in stage two for Christopher Bell and his teammates as well over there in the JGR camp.
It's NASCAR Cup Series, the Ally 400 on NBC. And as we're closing in now on the halfway point of this race, let's get a few updates. We'll start with Marty. Rick, let's get some credit to Bubba Wallace. What a run you guys mentioned earlier. 30th to 6 for Wallace. And he told me earlier this weekend, I've been working really hard to carry over a positive attitude, not only race to race, but stage to stage, where he can take a lot of positives out of this early run for Wallace, knocking on the door of that top five. Dave? Marty, taking a look at Eric Jones, who, when you start 23rd on the day, you just hope to go forward and make up spots. And he has done that, including this last restart, where he reported back the fire off was much better. Restarted 17th, worked his way up to 13th. So Jones having a good afternoon in the 43 car. And after the five of Kyle Larson, well, he's been dropping back. Restarted 11th there, fell back to 16th. We showed you that whoa moment where his car got out of shape. But he's just been talking about not having pain. In fact, when he drove the car harder to try to make it happen, the car got too free on him. So the driver just saying, not a lot of pace in the five this afternoon, Parker. Well, Dave, in an unfortunate turn of events for Austin Cindric in the two car, about 10 laps ago, we saw him make an unscheduled green flag stop. He thought he had a loose wheel. They changed all four wheels and tires now, looked him over and told him, unfortunately, they didn't see anything. Jeremy Bowens, his crew chief, said, we'll talk about it after the race, Marty. And Parker, one thing all the spotters are talking about and drivers are starting to notice some raindrops around the speedway starting to fall. Certainly picks up the sense of urgency a little bit, but we have 70 to go in stage two, so a long way to go here to get even get to halfway. Well, today, though, Marty, would be 150 laps would be a, considered an official race, so 34 laps until the 150 mark. That would be an official race if rain does come, but when I look at the radar, it's a small little blip. I'm not saying we won't get a shower, Rick, but it would have to change dramatically if I thought it was going to end the race. And the gap still has not closed between Ryan Blaney in the 12 and the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. You know, I'm a little surprised, guys, that Martin, look where Martin Truex Jr. is running. You know, he's solid third lane, fourth lane sometimes. Most of the field, though, is still pretty much wrapping the bottom of the racetrack. Surprised more people haven't tried to run where he's running. And we see this lead really unchanged over the last several laps, but when we look in the back of the top of the screen there, that 18 car driving from the back of the field, Kyle Busch, He's closing in on these guys a little bit at a time. Rain or rain. Talking about rain on the windshield, some drops. We don't really see anything outside the window here, but caution's out. Yellow, yellow for rain. And yellow for rain. Just watch. It does come out for the precipitation. And I'm, I applaud NASCAR. You know, it's so easy to say we need to stay under green and get to the 150 and do all those things. But this place is slick. I mean, you're running 130, 40, 50 miles an hour. You just can't have a downpour in one corner. And yesterday, right during qualifying, we, we had a perfect looking day. And then in, instantly, we had a massive storm dumped a ton of water. So they've had issues in the past where they've had some quick shower sneak up on them. And that's kind of what kind of type of weather we have today. You're telling me I was down on the Peacock pit box. It rained <laughs> quick, hard and quick. Yep. All right, guys, so let's go back and tell the Joey Logano story. Put on two tires, right? Fell back, fell back to ninth, but he was running 18th before he put on two tires. So a net gain of, of nine positions. So, you know, you can say the two tires didn't work, but he gave you some track position right here. Yeah, I think they need to work on the balance a little bit to improve just the overall pace in that car, but. Turning it off and on. Saving a little fuel. So, so Rick, this is a little awkward for the crew chiefs, right? You look at. 29 laps complete, so 67 basically to go in this stage, 66. You have to ask yourself, if we're running the whole race, this is a this is a fuel window opportunity. Fill your car up, you can run to the end of stage two. You you know, that would be the call to make sure you don't lose a lap, have to pin under green. What's your radar say, right? Do you believe this rain's gonna build? I don't believe it is, but we, we see what a win can get you. It could be playoff first. So is someone going to try something crazy? I mean, you see it's just a little spot that's jumped out. So I think pit road will be busy. But, you know, I just put it out there that maybe somebody might think different than, than us up here. Is this where a crew chief gambles? And you think, okay, I might know the weather better than others and I'm going to do something different? It would be a big gamble. But you have to ask yourself, you know, what are you willing to risk? If you look towards the bottom of our pylon, we have Harrison Burton in 19th. Uh, Brad Kozlowski in 20th. Those are two cars that when you look at the points, it would be 
a tall task to think they're going to point their way into the playoffs. So maybe they they gamble. But this would be a uh, you know this would be instead of taking an extra card blackjack, this would be more like one chip at the roulette table. You're going to have to yeah. get super super lucky. Um, but we've seen it before, so we'll see what they do. Marty. Well, Steve, I think I think crew chiefs are thinking they're going to pit here because when they look at that radar that you guys showed a moment ago, there's nothing behind it. So everyone kind of thinks that this is going to pass very quickly, to your point you made a moment ago. So they're going to go ahead and make stops here because you can make it to the end of the stage from this point. And yes, here are all the crew chiefs saying, now bring it to us. Yeah, that would be my choice. We saw yesterday in Xfinity Series race. Some chose to stay out and they ended up having to pin under green and really hurt them. There's still a lot of racing to go. So now it's back on the pit crew. Let's see who can perform. Parker. Ryan Blaney will pit from the second position here. They told him he slid a little too far in his box last time, so back it up. Don't go quite as far to the sign. They called for red, so we'll see what this is. It looks like it'll be four Goodyear tires for Blaney, who asks for a little bit more turn in the center, Marty. Martin Truex Jr. saw Blaney in his rearview mirror and kind of reassured the team, I'm running the pace I need. Just trust me here again, trying to take care of that right rear, as he mentioned a moment ago. Kyle Busch said the car is all over the track. In fact, in one radio transmission, he said it's loose, it's tight. I I'm on top of the racetrack. I have no idea what to tell you to do for fresh Goodyear tires for Kyle Busch and a few changes as well. Good stop for the 19 team. Blaney also holding their position as does Kyle Busch. A spot for Harvick and three for Hamlin on pit road. Caution is out for weather, but it does seem like that little bit of precipitation that we were seeing fall has stopped completely. We are still under caution, though, and it's important to note, I mentioned earlier, the heat that we're seeing. This is when drivers start to feel the heat the most. They're very vocal about being able to really tune it out until they have to slow down and ride around under caution laps. We saw earlier about a 64% humidity at the start of this race. Well, with that little bit of rain that we saw in the area, humidity is expected to rise. We're already feeling it get even more muggy down here in pit road so we can expect to hear a lot more um let's call them eh, their complaints from the drivers in the cockpit the heat is definitely playing factor here today so it's something to uh, pay attention to With a guaranteed championship opportunity on the line, your favorite superstars will do whatever it takes to seize their moment. Don't miss WWE Money in the Bank. Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, streaming live on Peacock. And catch WWE Raw every Monday at 8, 7 Central, only on USA. And speaking of superstars, how about WWE superstar Sheamus? He's with Marty. Hey, Rick, you never know who you'll find at a racetrack. Sheamus is here hanging out. So SummerSlam's coming to Nashville later this summer, right? That's right, yeah. We're here at July 30th it's at the Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans. If there was a roof in that place, you'd blow it off. But as I said, this is my home away from home here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm enjoying the race right now. There's a lot of, a lot of change going on in the leaderboard. 
of open Kyle Busch, or at least when you make Corey the joy gets on the uh, gets across the checkered flag. Before the trip back to Nashville, money in the bank's coming up too. I know you're looking forward to that. Yeah, the only thing is ladders, man. I'm not great in ladders. Uh, when it's going up the way, the green flag just brought a bit of a flashback from all those matches. <laughs> they're, they're some of the toughest matches you ever have, but yeah, that's this Saturday. It's going to be in Vegas, but both, uh, both money in the bank at SummerSlam are going to be on Peacock. So you can got Peacock, you can watch the match, fella. I got Murdy out there too. You're right, Murdy. Come on. There you go. Old town guy, loving the NASCAR race here today. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, up, of course, moments ago when Marty was able to catch up with Seamus, the uh, Grand Marshal honorary starter. He was up on the flag stand for the start of this race. And Rick, there's a lot to unpack in that entire pit cycle. We saw the 23 of Bubba Wallace have some sort of issue, came back down pit road, worked on the corner of the car. It sounded on the radio like they were cleaning up the threads from perhaps a wheel being loose. And he but lost. Then, yeah, I was going to say, then he didn't leave pit road in time and he lost a lap. So. The, the issue got multiplied, and then we had the nine on pit road. Dave, it's busy down there. <laughs> Whole lot of things going on, Steve. The nine of Chase Elliott will be starting way far back. They had a slow stop on the left front, so after that happened, Alan Gustafson called Chase Elliott back down pit road to make a big adjustment on the right rear, which had been building too much and freeing up the car way too much, so took the opportunity to do that. Daniel Suarez, on the other hand, was leaving pit road when they called him to stop because the left rear was not, uh, sorry, the left front was not on tight they came back tightened it up sent him back out but he'll start back in I believe 22nd once the choose is done Marty let's chat with Booty Barker so what exactly happened there you guys had just gotten to fourth I uh, had a less loose left rear had a loose left rear so we had to come back out and put it tight and then you had to do the chaser nut to make sure that the thread was okay yes because if it puts it on we don't get it cinched back up and come off later there you go. So they lost a ton of track position. As you mentioned, gone down a lap. Bubba Wallace not very happy. Booty Barker reassuring him, much like he did after qualifying. We are not out of the game. Martrex Jr. on the outside. Blaney on the inside for this restart. Five Kyle Larson had a speeding penalty right there. He's got to start in the back. Cross Cross Chastain, Chastain. Yeah, in the middle, three <laughs> wide. Zinging by them. Grabbed a couple spots real quick right there. I mean, these, these guys are so aggressive on these restarts. It's such a great time, great opportunity to make some spots up. Hamlin has worked his way by the four of Kevin Harvick. He's running fourth now. Blaney trying to hang on the side of this 19 car. True X, True X up high. Blaney down low. Shallow entry to one for Blaney. True X arcs it off in there. It's going to have great acceleration on corner exit. Denny Hamlin up to third now as he's past the 18 of Kyle Busch. And still they race for the lead. A little bit of side draft still works in these cars. You can see Blaney trying to get some of that. Right around the bottom at 12 car. Look at this here. One car sliding up the track a little bit into the side of the 20. Slows them both down. Kurt Busch trying to help Christopher Bell back here. Still battling for the lead. And now Blaney with a nose in front of the 19. Oh! But not enough room to oh. complete the pass. That was a slide job. Just didn't work out. They here. slowed him down both so much. Here comes Hamlin. And Hamlin fighting for the lead once again. Oh, Hamlin man. up the racetrack a little bit. He's going to take away the line for the 12 car. Blaney. Here comes Truex with the run to, his out, to the outside of his teammate. Great racing right here after this restart. Hamlin saw how different his car was back there in traffic. He wants this clean air, <laughs> wants to get this lead back. Yep. And Blayton thinks he has the better car of any of them. He just needs to get, get another chance to get up there and take the lead. Look at this slide job. Wow, he just drove so far into the corner. Here comes Trix, though, back on the inside. Still two out the back, two wide. That's brought everybody behind them up into this mix, side by side. Kyle Busch and the 12 of Blaney is the two leaders still battle. Two teammates battling down the back straightaway, almost contact. Rick Truex has loved the outside. He's having to learn how to drive his car down here on the bottom. Junior, you almost used the right word. You were going to say mess. <laughs> and you threw out the word mix. It has definitely been a mess up here in front. 
and still undecided as Truex Jr. fights on the inside, trying to hold on to the top spot. Denny Hamlin working the still outside the perfectly. Three out the back again, still in there at your left rear. Three out the back, no run, no run. These two stay side by side for the lead. And right behind them, ready to pounce is the 18 of Kyle Busch. Kyle's way high off the racetrack, gonna have a pretty good run here down the straightaway. Three out the back with no run. You in the 19 here. See what Ham was doing. He's two driving really deep in the corner to keep 2X from trying that slide job. As long as Hamlin carries that much speed in the corner, Truex can't overdrive the entry and try to slide up in front of him. Hamlin taking that option away from him. Slowly but surely, let's bring the 18 car into this. He's going higher and higher, trying to get clean air up the racetrack. Keep his car turning. He might be able to get to the outside of that 19 here down the straightaway. Not quite big enough run. Hamlin clears the 19. A little bit of a run here out of Kyle Busch now. What will he do with it? And Truex is going to climb the banking and kind of play a little defense. I've been coming to NASCAR races since 1995, and I have never seen quite this style of racing. Like that pass from the 11, he just drives in way farther than the 19 up the track. Before, that would have killed your momentum, and he just takes the air. It's fascinating, Marty. And uh, Steve, Jeff nailed it. That was a battle more than anything else for clean air. At the end of that last run, Denny Hamlin said, wow, that was way different back in the pack. This clean air means everything today. Truex had it, kept the lead. Hamlin's now got it, and he's checking out. That's what he did at the beginning of the race as well. Uh, led the first 70 laps of this race. See at the bottom of the screen, Christopher Bell trying his hardest to get by this 12 car up the racetrack. Blaney's going to stay there on the outside, down the front straightaway, right behind him, Ross Chastain with a good run. Who's he going to help? Where's he going to go? To the top of the racetrack. Still side by side off of two. One thing that's happened with these cars, Junior, is these cars can run side by side better than any cars we've ever seen in NASCAR's history. They, they're able to run side by side without pulling the air off of that inside car. In the past, Christopher Bell would be sideways loose right here, but you can see how tight he actually got. Oh, man. Really close there. Yeah. A lot of trust between the guy beside you when you drive up the track to him to get the side draft. And now here's Chastain. Working to the inside, trying to get by the 12. I think Chastain has, you know, he might not be as quite as good as the Gibbs, but he's one of the better cars in the field, and I think he's suffering from that dirty air we're talking about. If he can get clear of these guys, get back up into top three, I think he has a car to win. He's worked hard after some issues on pit road to try to drive through this field. We mentioned the issue for Bubba Wallace, but it actually got Tyler Reddick involved. Bubba Wallace stops, look right here, smoke front tires, Reddick runs into him, has to pit a second time for damage, currently 25th. We'll have to see how much that damage hurts the eight car.
caution has come back out this time for another lightning strike. And so they will be bringing the cars back onto the pit road here in just a moment. Again, a mandatory 30 minutes waiting period after a lightning strike. And so we've experienced this once already. It was in stage one after 41 laps of racing were complete. And now after 139 laps have been completed, they will bring them back onto pit road for the second time for lightning this evening. It's the NASCAR Cup Series from Nashville Super Speedway. The Ally 400 about to get back underway from this mile and a third concrete oval as the drivers are strapped back into their cars, firing the engines up now. Crews stretching back out, getting ready to go after a lightning and rain delay, almost two hours. And now with the track dry, they're about to roll off of pit road. They'll then dry that portion of pit road where the cars are currently. And we'll be back to racing here shortly. And alongside Steve Lickhart, Jeff Burton, Dale Earnhardt Jr. All right, guys, this kind of a delay, you've got you know, almost half of the race under your belt. What have you learned and how confident do you feel that your car is going to handle the same way when you get back out on the track? Yeah, it won't handle the same way. This is definitely uh, conditions that they haven't practiced or raced in all weekend it's been really really hot they practiced throughout the afternoon raced earlier today uh, the track rubbered up all the way to the wall put a lot of rubber down in that heat and i'm just not sure what type of racetrack we'll have going forward with those lower temperatures cooler temperatures that should feed the race a little bit closer to the bottom of the racetrack and change the handling of several of these race cars so some of these teams are gonna have to work hard under the future pit stops to try to dial those cars back in. With this added grip because of the cooler temperatures, the cars are going to travel more. And that completely changes the way these cars drive. The attitude of the car is huge. The drivers are going to have to pinpoint very quickly. Hey, here's what my car is doing. They're going to have to get very aggressive on, on pit stops about making changes to keep up with this racetrack. Aggression is going to be key, Rick. Jeff Burton just said it. I believe, you know, we still have 160 laps to go. The radar looks like it's clearing out. We're assuming we're going to run this whole thing. So these crew chiefs, at some point, you can't completely give up a track position, but you may pit like right now. We're only been about 20 minutes or excuse me, 20 laps since the last pit stop. You may come down just to get ahead on those adjustments. You've been talking with your engineers, talking with your driver. You haven't at least a guess on which way. The first guy to get there soonest with the correct balance and the correct adjustments will have a huge advantage. I also think that we shouldn't assume that these guys are thinking we're going to go all the way to the end. You get one rain shower this late in the night, we're almost halfway. So some of these guys might have this mentality. As soon as they drop the green flag, we might be racing for the win. So you, you can expect to see a very aggressive restart. We basically just listed all the reasons I do television. Because these crew <laughs> chiefs down here, they got knots in their stomachs. I mean, this is... You know, the playoffs are coming. The pressure is here. There's a lot of teams that aren't where they want to be. And flip it. How about Denny Hamlin? Had a great race. He's led 78 laps. Now you don't want to be the guy that gives away what was the most dominant race car. So it's pressure packed. Let's get a few updates. We'll start with Parker. Right, and you guys were talking about the weather. Just listening to Rodney Childers talk to Kevin Harvick here. They ran about 15 laps on these tires, and they were just discussing whether the pit or not. Although it is clear right now, it is dry. There is still weather in the area. There's pop-up showers, and so he basically was asking Kevin if he felt like on a green track with those 15-lap tires, if they really needed tires, and if if we're only, what, 10 laps away from halfway here, and once we get past halfway, this race could be official. So some decisions still being made on pit road in, in uh, with this rain in the area, Dave. Parker, the youngest Joe Gibbs racing driver, Christopher Bell, running fifth right now. Talked to us during the rain delay about seeing his teammates up there, motivating him to do what he knows he can do, which is run as fast as them. And after working on this car all weekend, they have it drivable for Christopher, raceable for Christopher, and now we'll see what he can do with the veterans up there. To that point about adjustments, though, Parker, they may need to go in that direction as well and see where the track is going. Hey, come down pit road, make those adjustments, and again, try to be the ones who guess the best, Marty, to see where this place is going to head in the next several laps. Dave, you mentioned Christopher Bell sitting in fifth, the worst to the Joe Gibbs racing drivers. I mean, they have been dominant in the first part of this race. The other drivers sitting one, two, three with Denny Hammond, Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch. But that was in temperatures way different than they are right now. As Junior mentioned, it was 102 with the real feel when this race started. Now it's 75. I talked to Denny Hamlin right before he climbed in the race car. He said, I have no idea what to expect. 
So to that point, Steve, a lot of teams, even the teams up front in the top 10, top five maybe, are thinking about coming down and pitting, making some drastic changes because nobody is prepared for these type of conditions because it was so hot in practice earlier this week. And as you go down the running order, someone's going to say, good for you. Right, is it Micah McDowell in ninth? I know he doesn't want to, you know, get on the wrong side of the strategy, but we mentioned the pop-up showers. Does, you know, is he the first guy that stays on the racetrack? We saw, you know, a Daytona race be one with lightning. We've seen Pocono, one in fog. So, you know, someone's going to stay out and try to, I don't even want to call it steal a victory, but get a victory that perhaps we didn't see coming when this race was running earlier today. Drivers weaving back and forth. You take a look behind the pace truck here, the pace cam, Coca-Cola cam. They have to drive off pit road where the cars were sitting and want to be able to open pit road up for the teams to make some pit stops, but can't do that until we have a very safe outside groove down pit road. Well, as this happens, the magic number is 150 laps. We're at 142 right here. Once 150 laps are complete, this race is official. That's halfway. Can be official. If Correct. It's not the end of stage two anymore. It can be official. So therefore, uh, that puts a little bit more pressure on all of these decisions we're discussing. Why does that change? I mean, I guess if it's not official, you can, you know, you can pit and lose that track position. But if you think that we're going to roll past that point before we get back to green, right? Well, while we wait on this pit road to dry and then pit road opens up, there is rain in the area, Steve. So then what do you do? Do you give, you probably stay out if you're one of those teams in the top five on those 15 lap tires with rain in the area this late. I think it depends on how many wins you have on the season, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dive into a race recap as to what took place getting us to this point. Well, you mentioned it. Joe Gibbs Racing has dominated this race. Started right at the drop of the green flag. Denny Hamlin jumped out to a big lead. Lightning strike. Follows the red flag. Yeah, the delay, the first delay. And when we came back racing, it was the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. wide showing his dominance. The 24 of William Byron, though, had a mechanical issue. He had to go to the garage. They were able to repair it, but now there are many laps down. His teammate, Alex Bowman, contact with the 7 of Corey LaJoy, heavy damage to the 48. The 14 and 42 cars, they get together. Todd Dillon feels like they've made their car a little bit better. It feels like they're somewhat competitive. Martin Truex Jr., fresh off the news, he's coming back next year, win stage one. And then our friend the weather came, lightning, and then rain, and then track drying. But here we are now, the track is looking good. Pit road getting closer as we get going here. The big movement actually on pit road as I look out the window, getting uh, dry there. That's, you know, people ask, you know, why is that important? Safety, right? I, I was one of these crew members that jumped over pit wall. You don't want to go head to head with a 3,500 pound race car. And you can't ask these drivers to not compete. Even on pit road, it's a competition. They're trying to optimize everything. So NASCAR needs to get it in a more I'll call it comfortable or confident situation that everybody can be in control of their cars. You see that Dover dryer right there. They brought in some extra equipment from across the series, anticipating the necessary work to be done to dry the track. So that's good. And again, they're now just working on pit road where the cars were parked. They had dried the rest of pit road when the cars were still parked on there as they had dried the track. And so just a small little area of pit road that they're working on to get dry as the cars work their way around the mile and a third. Hamlin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, and Christopher Bell, the Joe Gibbs Racing foursome, uh, currently in the top five right now, only separated by Harvick, who is looking for a win and has been for two years now. Have the opportunity to check in with Denny Hamlin, who's out in front of this field, Jeff. Hey, Denny, this guy's up in the booth. How you doing? Let's try him one more time. Hey, Denny Hamlin, guy's up in the booth. How are you? Doing good. Well, over 80 laps led tonight. Looks like you got a fast race car. How do you feel about the rest of the night with this track changing? Yeah, I mean, ideally, uh, when it was hot and slick, it's probably when we're at our best. Uh, that's just kind of our usual trend. But we uh, we all got a new track now, so we're going to uh, adapt to it. 
hopefully keep this thing on the ground camera up front that uh, I think it's fast enough that and adaptable enough that uh, it's got some speed in it that uh, we can handle. So, Denny, we were discussing the track temps and how they've changed so much. Tell us and the fans what your role is in understanding what this car needs to do different and get that information to the team as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, we definitely got to do that. It's going to be important for us to you know, kind of give the feedback. Uh, we haven't really had this situation on the concrete track this year where we had a rain delay, we're coming back, and, uh, you know, from day to night, and let's see what the balance change is. We know what it was in the old car, but trying to predict it for this new one is going to be uh, a challenge. So we're going to guess and see how it goes. Well, Danny, we appreciate you letting us ride along, buddy. Have a good rest of the night. Thank you. You see right there in the bottom of the pylon exactly what Denny's talking about. Not just a clean racetrack, but the temperature, 94 degrees. Now, while the humidity's gone up, the temperature has dropped nearly 20 degrees. That is a major shift, both in car balance, mechanical expectations, pace, as Jeff talked about. Even if your car drives the same, it's going to be going faster. So will that tax the front or the back, or will you perhaps over-travel? I mean, well, these things are fine-tuned, I mean, to the, you know, eighth of an inch of travel or hundred thousandths of an inch. So a big pickup in pace can be a challenge. It was an interesting conversation, I thought, Junior with Denny Hamlin right there. And he's, hey, we haven't been in this situation before. We haven't been on a concrete track where we were running. Then we get a rain delay. We got to make changes. They don't know. I mean, they're learning on the fly right here. Let's check back in with Dave on the nine car. Yeah, Rick, while Chase Elliott was buckling into his Chevrolet, had a chance to lean in and say, so uh, you had a chance to make a major adjustment on your race car earlier and then run some laps before the rain. And folks will remember that they had a they had a pit stop snafu, so they pitted again to make the major adjustment in the right rear of the car to try to get that right rear out of the air a little bit, make it not as loose. The right, air was just, the right rear was just kind of up in the air. I said, did that help? Even though the track is changing now, did you get it balanced then? He goes, uh, no. <laughs> it was still very, very loose. So we'll see how that works. Steve, I don't know if a car that was so loose earlier is going to automatically grip up a little bit with these cooling temperatures. How does that usually work? Uh, you know, not necessarily the new car, but how did it traditionally work? Well, to go back to what Danny said, we don't know about this car. My gut and my history would say that the cooler the racetrack, the more grip, but normally in the front. So loose normally would be worse at a place like the 600 when it cools. Um, we're all gonna learn together though. When we see the green flag right here, this is an important for everyone, but uh, the tendency would be, in my mind, to get freer. It's been an impressive night already for Joe Gibbs Racing, especially Kyle Busch, who started at the back of the field. He's all the way up to third. Let's see if we can dial him up on the radio, Jeff. Hey Kyle, it's Burton, you got us? Yes, sir. Well, I think it's fair to say you've probably passed the most cars on the racetrack tonight. What do you need to get by those two teammates in front of you? Uh, yeah, a little bit of help in uh, three and four. Just feel like one and two, not bad, pretty easy. Uh, but three and four have a tight spot there right down in the center. Have to slow up too much, and those guys seem to be rolling through there a little bit better. So if we can find out what, uh, what trick that is, we'll, uh, we'll have something for them. Kyle, appreciate it, buddy. Have a good rest of the night. Thanks for taking some time. Thank you. We got off the radio because it looks as though pit road is cleaned up enough that they will be sending them down pit road. We didn't want to be involved in communications when they're calling him onto pit road. Yeah, decision time. A lot of conversation up here. We'll see what teams decide to pit. 39 laps to go in this stage. Uh, they should all have enough fuel to make it to the end of the stage, so that wouldn't be your decision. It would be adjustments, or if you feel new tires are an advantage, a little bit of question mark about the weather. So there's going to be uh, a few assumptions and a lot of guessing in what the right call is here. You know, if you're looking at the radar, a second ago I was nervous about pitting. Now it's looking like it's a little bit better, like we might actually get several laps here to finish <laughs> this race. So <laughs> anybody's guess, but I think that we're in good shape, so these guys probably come down pit road and work on these cars. You never know with pop up showers on such a very warm evening as a few cars are making their way onto pit road. Parker. 
And it was a super late call for Kevin Harvick for Rodney Childers. He first said, just follow the two in front of you, and then just said, let's come, let's come. So he comes down here to pit road. They were deciding if they wanted to pit or not with the weather in the area. It's going to be four Goodyear tires for Kevin Harvick. Really split decision. Oh, a little contact on pit road. Yeah. Christopher Bell, the 78. Yeah, B.J. McLeod coming in, Christopher Bell trying to go out, and contact was made between the 78 and the 20. How much damage was done to Christopher Bell? That'll be the question. 20 was running in the fifth position when he chose to pit. Let's take another look at it, Junior. Right here, the 78 is trying to get in his stall. The 20's leaving his stall. Here you see B.J. Try, you know, B.J. thought Christopher would just slow down. Boom, there's the contact. Now they're both <laughs> Trying to go forward, Christopher knows that was a hard, hard hit. They Guys, he radioed in. He says, I don't think I hit too hard. And then from up above, they've looked at it a little bit and said, I don't think you're that bad off. So the 20 appears to be OK. Yep. Many months ago, that would have probably uh, snapped the toe link, bent the toe link. They have since re-engineered those, beefed them up a little bit, just made them bigger. And they are taking better hits. Now, when they do hit, they bend mounts, uh, bolts, and things like that. but. At least it's uh, it's it's a little bit beefier than it was at the start of the year, so he should be in good shape. Pit Road is a dangerous place, and it's a good thing. Look at this three team. What, what if they were one pit stall further up? Those guys are actually into the side of that car with guys all over the pit walls. That that shows you how dangerous pit road can be. When you ask yourself how that happens, well. If both cars were on the lead lap, I would say the car entering has the right of way. The car leaving has to concede the position. I think right there, if I'm the crew chief of the 20 calling him out of the box, I'm assuming the 78 is going to concede because he's a couple laps down. Now, that doesn't mean he's in the wrong. I'm just saying that would be my mentality. If I'm the crew chief of the 20, I'm assuming the 78 is going to give way to us, and I'm going to probably make the same mistake and call my car out of the pit box and probably have the same issue. So the field bunching back up again. And we'll see when they go by this next time if they will begin to choose which line they want to restart in. Again, Denny Hamlin, Martin Trex Jr., Kyle Busch, all staying out. We saw Kevin Harvick, who was in fourth. He came to pit road. And so basically, 10 cars have stayed on the racetrack. Hamlin to Harrison Burton to the front. I'll call it five rows, but we haven't done the choose. You'll have a little bit of movement around there. And we'll just see how it cycles around uh, between adjustments and new tires and aggressive. How, you know, we saw Truex go to the top three wide and make moves. Here's the choose right here. So teammates top, bottom, 18 goes to the top. Pretty even decisions. And on the left side, you see that last pit and kind of where they line up. So. Getting your counting in, Jeff, what are you thinking? I mean, that's a lot. Top to bottom and the spotters and where you got to line up. Yeah. It's really an easy, easy thing. If, you, if you're if you a spotter, you're basically picking one side or the other, inside or outside, and you're telling your driver how many are in the only that line. And then he can choose knowing how many are in that one side, whether he wants to go to that lane or the other one. So if you're in 18 and your spotter says, seven on the inside, well, that means you're going to gain a few spots if you go down there. And there are times that you may be willing to give up a row because you think the row in front of you is faster or that your car is better in the outside or the inside lane. There's other times you would, no matter what, you want to just get up as far as you can. With 36 to go in this stage, I think you just want as much track position as you can in the shortest row. When they get the green flag, it will be officially halfway of this 300 lap race. They will have completed 150 laps. Denny Hamlin will restart on the outside. Martin Trex Jr. on the inside. He has been great in that outside line. We'll see what he can do on the inside. Back to racing in Nashville. This part right here is what has always impressed me about race car drivers. It's been two hours, the track is completely different, and they are wide open here at the mile and a third. And still side by side for the lead. Up front, 
We've seen this all race long. Still battling side-by-side -side tricks. Trying to stay on that quarter panel. It's going to keep him even down the front straightaway. He moves away to try to not allow him to side draft. Takes a really shallow entry. How in the world can that car stay on the yellow line like that with that shallow yeah, entry? Door. It's going to hurt him Bumper. a little bit, I think. Still I don't know how he's to stay right there. Finally, Denny is clear. You can hear the spotter go where you want to go here. I think with the low, you know, with low temperatures, must be so much grip, Jeff, that they're able to, you know, shallow entry these corners. Let's see, we heard Kyle Busch say that he felt like his weak point was in the middle of three and four, was a little bit tight. Here's the one car, Chastain's been fast all night. And new tires, Jeff, he was one of the cars that pitted. So he has newer tires of the car in front. We'll see if that benefits. An aggressive move right there from Harvick to block the 16. The 16 did find his way to the inside of the four. Really tight there between A.J. Allmendinger and Kevin Harvick. And still very tight between these two. A couple hard-headed drivers right there, A.J. and Harvick. They're kind of similar in disposition. Oh, man. AJ right up in front of Harvick. Harvick almost with a cross over there, trying to get to that left rear. AJ's going to block a little bit down into one. Harvick's not going to like that. Not at all. He takes his airway, though, and look at the difference. It gives AJ a little bit of breathing room. Pulling away. So Almondinger getting by the four and then pulls away to about a three car length advantage. About four car lengths separating the top two Hamlin and Truex Jr. Kyle Bush, Blaney, and Kurt Bush, the top five. Chastain, McDowell, Chase Elliott. Busher Logano, the top 10. As the field settles in, Rick, great battle here between the five and the 16 on board with Almond Digger. Kyle Larson gets to his outside. Those new tires have settled in, right? Uh, so they kind of made a little bit of an advantage maybe on the restart, but old tires continue to lead. As green as this racetrack was thought to be, because of the rain. Uh, it's actually putting rubber down rather quickly. Or there's still some good rubber out there from earlier. And these guys are using more than just the bottom of this racetrack. I was thinking this thing might get right to the bottom as cool and as late as it is, but there's still some, some grip in that second groove, maybe even the third groove. Almondinger has lost a couple spots. He lost that spot that he was fighting with Harvick with. And now to Larson, also a position. Yeah, Larson went down and took his took his air, and you saw him have to lift in the 21 here. Burton is underneath him going in the corner. AJ just trying to stop the slide here back to the field. And Almendinger, a driver that came down the pit road and got four fresh tires. Harrison right there. Trying to take this position for 13th. Harrison's had a had a difficult year this year trying to find his footing, but a good run tonight in this Wood Brothers number 21. They had good speed earlier when Chase Elliott had his problem on pit road. They got blocked in, lost all their track position, been trying to earn it back ever since. Speaking of Chase, he's on the inside of McDowell there for seventh. Chase clears him and moves up the racetrack, has that seventh spot. McDowell back to eighth. A little further forward. Blaney and Kurt Busch fighting for the fourth position. Hamlin back out front. 
He's led 99 laps. It's the most laps Denny has led in a race this season. Super Speedway, which does mean this race is technically complete if we were facing any more weather issues. But as I mentioned earlier, the radar is looking pretty good right now, and the action on track is looking even better. Hey, take a look at that top 10 right now, and you'll see the 34 of Michael McDowell running eighth. Stellar run for McDowell. Now, you may remember Michael from his career defining moment winning the Daytona 500 two seasons ago. This season, though, has been a standout season for McDowell as well. Six top 10 finishes, which is actually the most he's ever seen in a year. He's led 38 laps so far, which again is the most he's ever led in a season. So Michael McDowell currently running eighth, hoping to hold on to another top 10 finish here today in Nashville. One hundred and sixty three laps led between the two cars on the screen. Denny Hamlin has one hundred and five and Martin Truex Jr. Fifty eight. And once again, they're fighting for the top spot, searching for grip and fresh air. And so the two continue to battle for the lead. Marty. Boy, how about these Toyotas? One, two, three, four right now. The battle for the lead top of your screen. The battle for fourth on the bottom of your screen. And I asked Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin both about racing each other hard. Denny told me it's worth it. The clean air means everything tonight. And Truex said in that first run when I led all those laps, I pushed my car too hard. But if I have an opportunity, even though I have to push my car a little bit harder than I would like, I will go grab the lead. Trying to do that right now, Parker. And Marty, one of the few cars that seems like it could contend with the, to the Toyota is in front of him was Ryan Blaney there in the 12 cars. You look, a battle for the lead. Martin Trex goes to the bottom, guys. Trex is trying to find a way around. He gets the run off the high side, but Denny, you know, goes defensive and says, well, you're going to have to pass me on the bottom, and that's tough for Trex to do. You can see it. Trex back to the top of the racetrack. Going to try the same thing over again. Try to get that run off of two. A little faster than Denny right now, but Denny wants to stay out front. We talked about the clean air. He's not going to give this spot away to his teammate. Gave him the high line once again, and Martin Trex Jr. has taken it. We've seen him make some great moves on the outside tonight. And Martin just one inch at a time, right? Just a little bit at a time on that outside. Right here. Yeah. Gets right one to the quarter iron, panel. Outside. He's in the gas. Outside. Outside. He's there. That's going to be able to get in the spot. Denny Just might try to fight. Martin right by, and he is now leading here at Nashville as Denny Hamlin fights back on the inside. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised Denny's able to hang right there. Oh, not a great corner for Truex. Denny back to the inside. A little bit lower for Martin Truex Jr. this time. Interesting, he's not just drove away and cleared him easily. You know, 
I thought Trey's car was Making much better. Here, we'll pull away. Coming back to 13 to go. Coming back to 13 to go. When she was beating her, she was running higher and getting a wide open quicker. So they're hustling Denny to try to remind him about. Oh, Denny had a little moment right there. A little tight off the corner. But they're hustling him to try to fight, try to stay up here, and try to hang in there and try, you know, win this stage. He gave up a point, finishing second to Truex in stage one. Marty. Hey, Junior, one of the things that factored into the factor that uh, Martin Truex Jr. was willing to push his car a little bit more on this run with so few laps left in this stage. Remember, when he pushed the car hard in that stage one, he got very loose, and the right rear went away very quickly. But there's only 13 to go in the stage, so he felt like he could be a lot more aggressive here. It paid off. He's in the lead, trying to win stage two like he did stage one. I thought what was really interesting right there is they were given information about hey when he runs the outside he's able to get in the gas wide open sooner that's they're looking at the SMT data giving the drivers information so he understands exactly where the speed needs to come from Marty I'm sorry Parker well Jeff as we were saying earlier Ryan Blaney looked like one of the few cars that could contend with those trailers but he's been dropping like a rock here in the last couple laps all the way back to seventh he was running fourth earlier and just far too tight in that race car they were tighter earlier today even when he went for the lead at one point in this race but they've been just trying to loosen up. He hoped the cooler temperatures and less rubber on the racetrack would loosen that car up for them, but it has not been the case as they get later into this stage, falling back to the field right now out of the top five. Coming up on 10 to go in stage two, those of you that are playing NASCAR Fantasy, make sure to check your lineups because you'll have to move your garage pick out of the garage prior to the conclusion of stage two. Dave. Rick, you might have had uh, Michael McDowell on the borderline of your garage there because he was one of the cars that stayed out trying to limit the damage. It's tough to do. Michael's been fighting. He restarted fifth, but he's fallen back to tenth. Remember, did not pit. They'll look for adjustments to try to keep this 34 up in the top ten and further later on tonight. We question who's going to make adjustments, which car would maybe find more speed as the track has cooled. This is a car, guys, early in the race. I didn't think anything special. It's definitely not Kyle Larson in five car-esque, not what we saw a year ago here in Nashville. But since this restart, this five of Kyle Larson is continuing to run top two and three laps, Dave. And Steve, he didn't have anything special. He said it to his team over the radio. But just think about how this crew is operating now. Crew Chief Cliff Daniels suspended from the races for four weeks. He's operating electronically to the team. They had all that time to talk about what was happening with Kyle's car during that break. They've gotten it together. They made an adjustment on that pit stop. And Kyle Larson is coming through the field now. May have something to say before this night's over. Dave, okay, that is great information. We knew he wasn't here, but I just never thought about just going in the truck, picking up the phone, getting on Zoom, having a face-to-face -face with your crew chief. Looks like it's working for the five as he's attacking Ryan Blaney now, although the battle for the lead, Rick, is definitely not dwindling. That 11 will not go away. Well, and we saw this at the end of stage one. It looked as though Martin Truex Jr. was going to pull away, but then Denny kept just chipping away at that lead, and he's doing it once again, and he did it the exact same way. He goes to the bottom of the racetrack, closes the gap up, and then he will try to get a little bit closer and potentially even try the slide job on Martin Truex Jr. We know that Truex had gotten looser earlier in the race, and that's how Denny was able to run him down. Martin does look like he's struggling with the balance on that car. What's the, uh, what's the talk about the 11 car, Marty? We were talking about this over on NBC. We'll tell the USA audience, Denny told me earlier this weekend, second place in a stage means nothing to my race team. We've thrown in the towel on points. All we're worried about are playoff points. And the crazy thing is, Denny, Denny Hamlin's had a very up and down season. He gets one more playoff point. He would be the number one seed in the playoffs. Unbelievable, but Denny doesn't care about second right here. He only wants to win in this stage. Chase Elliott with a big move around Ross Chastain, bottom of the screen. As he moves into fifth place. The Hinder cars seem to like this, this, this uh, nighttime race in this cooler temperature. Look at this move. He got a big run. He's like, Spire's clear. It just hangs the left, takes that position from Ross. The gap staying about the same between the 11 and the 19, and coming up on four laps to go. Truex a little bit of traffic here, but after he passes this car, should be about a straightaway in front of him that's clear.
Denny looking for that playoff point. You win a stage, you win the playoff point. I wonder if it's, you know, a, a big balance shift for Truex when he's behind Denny versus out in front of him. Because as soon as he passed Denny, I thought he'd drive away, but he had a real hard time. Denny hung right on his quarter panel, and he's really, you know, not been able to shake him. I like that position for Denny Hamlin right there, a groove higher. I just think that gives you more opportunity to find a run. It's just so hard to make any time on the bottom of the racetrack. Larson and Chastain battling for that sixth position on the bottom of the screen. Larson's grabbed it back. Chastain falling back a little bit right here. And look at the gap closing once again on the top of your screen for the lead. Hamlin within a car length now of the 19. Coming up on two laps to go in stage two. And he follows almost in his tire tracks. That's got to be difficult for Denny Hamlin now. I want to say that Trex almost chose after he tried to watch Denny choose in the mirror, forcing him to try to get a lane higher. As Chase Elliott continues the march forward. Yeah, that's pretty smart for a driver. If you're if you know that you're disrupting the downforce of the car behind you, don't be too predictable about where you're going in the corner as far as going to the bottom of the track or the top of the track. One last attempt for Denny Hamlin here as they go down the backstretch for the final time in stage two. Gap just a little bit too wide through three and four and Martin Shrex Jr. looking to sweep the stages tonight at Nashville Super Speedway. He will win stage two. Fourteenth time that Martin Shrex Jr. has swept stages most of all the drivers and he's that's gone on to win six of those times. That's a big moment for the 12 of Blaney off turn four. Caution comes back out end of stage two. Watch Blaney and Harvick. Blaney's right on his right rear, thinks he's going to be out there, but when Harvick crosses in front of him, it changed the whole, way, whole down force on that car. Stage one and stage two winner, Martin Shrex Jr. Now the important stage. He hasn't won in 2022, but we know he's coming back to Joe Gibbs Racing. Can he get the win tonight? Stu, two stages complete here at Nashville Super Speedway. Martin Truex Jr. wins stage two. That makes two stage wins now for the 19 team. Hey, look at that top five finishing order, though. You'll see the 45 of Kurt Busch rounding out the stage top five there as we come to completion. And Kurt Busch, you know, he's got top three in two of the last four races this season. One win at Kansas, which means he is locked in to the playoffs. And in this race last year in Nashville, he finished eighth. So one more stage to go here at Nashville Super Speedway. Definitely some big players up front, some guys looking for a first win, some guys looking to lock themselves into the playoffs, and some drivers looking to just have a consistent run and finish out this race strong. So a lot of racing action here to go from Nashville Super Speedway. Enjoy it, race fans. Get ready for world-class speed at Southern Charm. 
in USA's newest reality series. It's Austin Dillon's Life in the Fast Lane. New episodes are Thursdays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern only right here on USA. Dillon has made his way up to 21st. That's about the best they've been running this evening. Yeah, small gains. Definitely not the car that they want, but still some racing, a whole stage to go. It'll be interesting to see here. I expect everybody to be on pit road. The question is, Will anybody gamble for two tires? We saw a net game for Joey Logano earlier in the race. We'll see if it happens again, Parker. Kurt Busch will not be one of those gambling as he pits out of the fifth position. He said it was cooking the right rear tire on the long run, which means it's just abusing that right rear too much as he goes to the last to be four Goodyear tires. It's an go field for him, Dave. Chase Elliott's biggest concern is getting four fresh Goodyear tires because after he passed Ross Jastain, he said, I thought I had a tire going down. That's why I eased off. Marty. Coming into the day, Martin Truex Jr. had only three stage wins. Gets two today, sweeps the afternoon on that. That is a knife edge after a couple laps, just so loose. Meanwhile, his teammate Denny Hamlin said he's still tight in the center, which might not be a terrible thing for that race team, because that's what he was earlier on the 11 with another rough stop, though. They lose a number of spots here on pit road. In fact, six of them, Rick. Yeah, six spots on pit road, and that team is not going to be happy about that stop. Shrek's Jr. holds the position, and Kyle Busch gains one. Moments away from starting our final stage here at Nashville Super Speedway. Take a look at that 21 car of Harrison Burton, the rookie. He's currently running 13th, his first time driving in the Cup Series here at Nashville Super Speedway. He did race in the Xfinity Series race here last year and finished third. And a little fun fact about that infamous Wood Brothers 21. If Harrison could pull off a win this season or whenever that 21 car finds victory lane next, it will be win number 100 for the Wood Brothers, NASCAR's long standing team. So keep an eye on Harrison Burton as the remainder of the season. Standout year for this rookie so far. Visit goldfish-racing.com and download the app for free for a chance to win race tickets, original racing gear, and more. Yes, that's goldfish-racing.com now. Truex, Danny Hamlin run one, two in the stage. Come to pit road. Truex holds the lead. Danny Hamlin loses spots. Here's their comparison right here. Look at that, 13.2. That is over three seconds slower than Martin Truex Jr. What does three seconds look like on a pit stop? It is very, very small. Watch Denny Hamlin pull in, and I want you to look at the front tire changer. He's going to drop, lug nut off, but watch him pull and pull and struggle to get that right front tire off. Now, the difference is, because of their choreography, he has to go all the way around to the left rear. So an issue on the right front, the time gets multiplied. It's an advantage that way when it goes smooth. They have great pit stops, but if you have a hiccup on the right front, it slows it down. Let's not forget this team is still missing a tire changer, a Jackman, and a crew chief. So, you know, so many moving parts in that replacement tire changer yep. doing his best, but a little bit of trouble on the right front tonight cost Danny Hamlin six spots. And normally, Joe Gibbs racing uh, some of the best pit crews and fastest times. Dave. 
And just an update reported that Chase Elliott was saying perhaps he had a tire going down, wasn't sure. All four came off and all four were up at the right pressures. So the question remains, is there anything going on with the nine or was that just an anomaly, Parker? And for Ross Chasse, remember he was so fast earlier in the race, he was running third when he had an actual loose wheel in the right rear. They went all the way back and it's taken him this long to get all the way back to just about the top three there in fourth position. He's had a really fast car. He could be a real contender as he get in this third stage, Marty. And Parker, to magnify the point Steve was talking about with the 11 pit stop a moment ago, it also slows down the jack man, right, Steve? Because he can't put down that right side of the car until the right side is completely done. So that adds to it as well. Not only is the right front guy going to the left rear, the jack man has to wait as well. It's like building a house, Rick. There's an order. You got to put your foundation, then your walls, then your roof. And with this sort of choreography, everything has to happen in order. Let's listen in to 11. Obviously, the dirty air sucks. Just try to get clean air on the nose at all costs. Try to use the top as much as possible to get momentum on the streets. Here's the feedback, you know, you can't go back and redo it. We still got a lot of racing, clean air on the nose, use the top, trying to coach him, give him some opportunity. It's going to be frustrating, though. He's what, on the, looks like the fifth row on the outside. Yeah, still in the top 10, but he was fighting for the lead at the end of stage two. Now he's got quite a few cars in front of him and Martin Truex Jr. He'll be on the outside. Kyle Busch on the inside and back to racing. racetrack goes the nine just a bit there for Chase Elliott as we see the one of Ross Chastain dropping back here comes the 45 of Kurt Busch and on the outside once again a very strong number four of Kevin Harvick three wide two rows two wide for the lead three wide for two rows is crazy around that all the way around the corner they settle it out oh Ross almost a little contact the left quarter panel of Harvick but Helps him move on in in front of those two guys. Still side by side up top for the lead. Here comes the 18. Kyle Busch to the inside. Can he clear the 19? Just not enough to get in front of him. Not only do they want to race really hard to keep the clean air, keep the lead, but there is still some weather building north of us that moves south. You've got to believe that there's some pressure and intensity. We're racing toward that weather. It could get here, could affect the end of this race. Bush was able to clear the 19 of Martrex Jr. So now it's Kyle Bush who's out front, led his first lap just on that lap. This is back in the pack, man. He's been racing really hard on the restarts for many, many laps. Back here in the middle of the middle of the pack, 10th. And on back. Oh, goodness. Christopher Bell there in the 20 on the inside. That DeWalt, DeWalt yellow paint scheme. Almendinger in the 16 out in front of these guys. It's kind of holding them up a little bit. Christopher Bell, the 20 on the inside there. Trying to get by McDowell in the 34 on the outside. Behind them, the 17. Eric Almarola also coming into the picture there in the 10. These two stay side by side. Bell not able to clear McDowell. Christopher real low in the front straightaway, trying to get away from that side draft a little bit. Just wrapping that yellow line. Now he's clear, McDowell. Good hard racing. McDowell had a pretty good, you know, top 10 run going. He slipped out of the top 10 now in 12th place. Hamlin trying to work his way back to the front after the issues on pit road. He's had to do this before in this race. Al knows how difficult his car is to drive back in traffic, and you see him lose the nose and have to lift. Lose a little time to Kurt Busch in the 45 car in front. Field stretching out just a bit now, and Steve, I'll ask you, 188 laps is where they came to pit road the last time in a 300-lap race. Where and how far can you go before you have to come down pit road for fuel. Well, I, I believe that, you know, tires don't seem to be a huge advantage. So you're going to run probably as long as you can. You don't want to lose laps by pitting early. So, you know, you, we think they can go about 70 laps green. So they'll run into this run. They're, what, 10 laps, about 50 or 60 more laps. So it'll only be about 30 or 40 laps left in the race when they come to pit road. We saw that good battle between the three and the 43. And here 
Jones and Austin Dillon. Austin was no good at the start of this race, but they have improved the car over the duration of the event, had a lot of opportunities to work on it. Chris Busher there in the 17, able to clear McDowell. McDowell and this team, they do such a good job. Not have the funding of all these people they race with, but every week they find a way to get in the battle. Really strong year for these guys. Marty. Jeff, nice run for Chris Busher as well, up there in the 12th position after the second place at Sonoma. Talked to him earlier this week. He said, man, after me being out for a week with COVID, I thought it before we definitely have to win a race. But he was so encouraged by what happened at Sonoma. They could have won that race. Next week, Road America, he says, I know I can go there and win the thing. I don't know if he expected a top 10 run today, but some nice speed out of the Roush Fenway Keselowski cars tonight. Yeah, as disappointing as Brad Keselowski might have been in his car in practice yesterday, he has to be happy with what he's seeing in his teammate, the pace they have. If it was both cars running poorly all the time, that would be really frustrating. You know you've got some serious issues, but he can look forward and see that 70 car and know that some games are getting made and things are getting better for Roush as they continue to soldier through the season. Brad, Brad also, he spoke so highly of Chris Buescher at Sonoma, how he is having such a major impact on this team. Thought he's the most underrated driver in the entire sport. Talked about how good he was, how fast he was, how good he was at pushing the team to make the right changes as well. Feels like he's a great teammate. Chris Buescher with the momentum coming off a second place finish at Sonoma two weeks ago. Parker. As we go on board here of Ryan Blaney, the nighttime is not the right time for the 12th car. If you remember earlier back in the daytime, he was challenging for the lead of this race. He restarted in the top five of that last run, fell all the way back to the back of the top ten, and then they had a slow stop under the stage two caution. They had a hang up on the left rear, all the way back to 25th. He restarted and now only made it up to the 20th position, but things going seriously wrong for the 12th car here as they showed so much speed earlier in this race. They're going to have to fight back from that bad pit stop. And right behind him, you see Daniel Suarez. He had ran all as high as second earlier in this race today. We thought the track house cars, they were second and third early. We thought they were going to have a really great run. He's also had some issues. Oh, the 12! He's going to hit the wall! Oh, Couldn't barely. catch it. Back across the track, into the grass, and the caution comes out. Ryan Blaney, what a ride. That was a great save, to be honest with you. I thought that that car was definitely going to fence with the right side. He almost did that same thing about 10 laps ago in three and four. Tried to carry so much speed on corner entry, and that thing started getting around on him. Well, the wall saved him. I don't know if it's a great save, but the wall was there for him, Parker. And guys, we've heard about how well, sensitive this, not. how sensitive no this how sensitive this car is to changes. He has been talking about how tight that car is all day, and even on that last run, said it was plowing tight, so they made some big changes with air pressure and some adjustments, and obviously maybe just went too far of the loose on that 12. Yeah, I, I thought that he was going to overcorrect and right front first into the wall. That was what I thought was so impressive, is right there, I thought he was going right front into the wall, but he somehow was able to, to keep that from happening right here brings the back around. Nobody makes contact with him coming back across the track. A very fortunate situation there. When it hooks like that, I mean with the with the with the rack and how quick the steering is, we've seen a lot of these guys overcorrect. He almost gets his teammate right here. That would take major difference. Now Cindric, watch how far he drives in the corner trying to get on the outside of the 21 and whoa, just not the grip he needed. Look at Cindric go by. Here's, it's a game of inches. Cindric went from having his night over to being the first car lap down and getting back in the lead lap on that exchange right there. More cars on pit road, uh, including that 45 of Kurt Busch, Parker. Right, he was complaining of loose earlier on the last run. They seemed to have made the car a little bit better. No, you see adjustment there now on the right rear for Kurt Busch trying to get slightly tightened up. Four good year tires for him, Dave. Chase Elliott gave a good report to his crew. He said, I can keep the control in my hands as far as the build goes in these tires. So just give me four new ones and fuel money. Jimmy Hamlin was 
was so frustrated by being back in that traffic. He's had clean air all night long. He did not on that run and drastically changed the handling of the race car for fresh Goodyear tires. And Steve, this certainly opens up the playbooks for the team stopping right now, maybe for later stops in the race. Yeah, a lot of opportunity, a little fire on pit road in the 43, but you're right, Marty, now options are open. Always scary when you see fire, Rick. Yeah, big fire there for the 43 team, Eric Jones. Pulling away, they put that out. Two hundred and six laps complete here from Nashville Super Speedway. Moments away from taking the green flag once again. But hey, take a look at that running order. The one car of Ross Chastain. He's currently in the fourth position. Excuse me, I believe he's now re racked here in the third position as we've uh, reset the lineup. But this is Chastain's first season with Trackhouse Racing. And in just year number one, he already has two wins with the team, has locked himself into the playoffs and he leads the series in top five finishes with seven already this season. Now he finished second in this race last year when he was driving for Chip Ganassi Racing. So he knows what it takes to have a strong finish here at Nashville Super Speedway. That one car definitely expected to hold on to a good run here and finish strong in Nashville tonight. Go inside the headset with access to NASCAR Scanner for only $2.99 a month. You can listen in on pit strategy and spotter communication, crew chief calls, and what your favorite driver has to say during the race. Plug into the app used on mobile devices. Visit NASCAR.com slash scanner. Welcome back. NASCAR Cup Series Racing, the Ally 400 from Nashville Super Speedway. Out in front now, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Running one and two as the choose cone has been passed by these two and the rest of the field. So Kyle has chosen that outside line. A big split decision. Basically, 12 cars stayed on the racetrack. Um, everyone else came to pit road. A couple two tire changes, mostly four. So that's where you no longer see Denny Hamlin. You don't longer see Chase Elliott. They were some of the first cars to come to pit road. We're going to see if this opportunity helps their chances or hurts their chances. It's hard to see where it plays out. I don't think they came for new tires because I think it's going to improve their car speed to drive back to the front. This is more of maybe having a little bit more fuel on board for the next pit stop. Get that fire on Eric Jones's number 43. They put it out in a pit stall, but the fire continued to burn on the left rear quarter panel all the way around the racetrack. The guy grabs the air gun to change the tires to use the compressed air coming out of me <laughs> to blow the fire out. That was great. Joe Gibbs racing one and two in the front row. Kyle Busch, Mark Trex Jr. Great flag back in the air. A big wiggle out of Truex, has to catch it. He's three wide for second now. He slid up the track and Chastain had some great momentum but had to slow up a little bit when he saw the 19 coming up the track. Things getting very tight here on this restart. Larson trying to make the move. He's falling back now. Still three wide for second. Our 
McDermott down there on the bottom. Really has his car pitched off three wide. Hard to get it to rotate the middle. Really good exit for him, though. Now Jeez. they got to do it again. We know Truex in the middle there. Feels like if he can get clear. Still mid three. He's faster Still than these two guys. Still major not, bumper here. not making that an easy task. Chastain with the momentum on the outside gets really wide to try to get away from him. And then it tightens right back up again. Here's a pretty good run by Martin Trex Jr. He's able to clear the one, but he still has the four of Harvick on his inside. I think Chastain got up there in the dust on the outside of the front straightaway. Just couldn't hold the grip in the middle of one and two, but now he's going to try to put it three wide here. Back to three wide, Ross Chastain. What a move. I mean, this guy's got some guts. Three wide bottom. Truex with the momentum on the high side, and that will shuffle Chastain back out, but right there on the inside is Harvick. Kyle Busch loving this. He's out two and a half seconds. Up the racetrack goes the 19 again. Here comes Chastain. Harvick has taken the spot away. Chastain gets in front of the 19, and back two spots goes Martin Truex Jr. Truex got upset over the bumps of the tunnel in the middle of three and four. Side by side of teammates, the Hendrick teammates back there. Chase Elliott in the nine on the outside. Goes by Kyle Larson in the five. Down into turn three, Chase Elliott moving forward in this field. First time we've really seen him up in the top five. He had to have a great restart. I mean, he, I, we were so focused, or I was so focused on that three wide, I wasn't quite sure how he got there, Junior, but all of a sudden he just showed up, plus six or seven spots from where he started. Truex is trying to find a way around Chastain. He's going to the high side here to try to get a run. Chastain's going to give him the room. Marty, what you got? Well, that was unbelievable. What was that? Three straight laps, three wide for second place there. Truex came on the radio, said, I'm just sideways. When he gets back to the gas, middle of the corner off, car just gets way loose on him. But somehow, he was able to hold on to it and still fighting there for third, Rick. Yeah, Ross Chastain has made the move to the inside here, trying to hug that yellow line, the shortest distance around the track. But the momentum goes to the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. as he has now cleared the one again. Here comes the nine of Chase Elliott. Yeah, Chase takes advantage of that opportunity. The slowed momentum of the one car on the bottom of the racetrack. Takes him another position into fourth place. Now can Truex get away and get it get into a rhythm? Chase probably sees that Martin's struggling with the balance. Big move right there, big slide on the 19. Chase tries to zero in on the back straightaway. Watch Chase drive down into the corner really deep. Trying to be able to get right to the quarter panel here. Great battle for third position. Harvick about a second ahead of these guys. In a season that has seen a mix of veterans and first-time winners, young drivers getting to victory lane, right now it is veteran drivers up front. The top five as Kyle Busch, Harvick, Truex Jr., Elliott, and Chastain. Chase Elliott, fourth position as we see another battle back here. He mentioned the restart. Remember, he came to Pitt Road, restarted 14th. Well, look at this move out of the nine of Chase Elliott. They go down into the corner, they get a little stacked up on the bottom, and he goes three wide by not just two cars, carries the momentum, finds his way to the outside of Chris Buescher in the 17, the 20 of Christopher Bell. All of this momentum down the front straightaway, turns left, gets all the way to the inside of Kyle Larson. When you're talking about big moves, five, six cars a lap, that's about as big a move as you're going to find here at Nashville. And for that reason, Chase Elliott right back in the mix. Dave. And Steve, remember I reported before we went back to green after the rain delay that Chase told me they hadn't made much headway when they were adjusting during the race earlier. But all that time they had as well, just like their teammate Kyle Larson, they had a chance to talk it over and make things right for this. Or did they even share as an organization? Did Hedrick Motorsports all get together and say, we think this is the direction to go because both the five and the nine have come to life, Marty? 
And how about Denny Hamlin? He was right behind Chase Elliott. Restarted 16th. He's up to six. So Hamlin knows, I don't want to be in traffic anymore. He's had to do it three times today. Hamlin making similar moves to Chase Elliott. It's Kyle Busch out front at Nashville. Now Kyle Busch has led 27 laps. And 21 laps in the books here from Nashville Super Speedway. When you take a look at that top 10, you'll notice the 10 car of Eric Amarola currently running ninth. Eric had a pretty stellar race here at Nashville last season. He earned the pole position and ultimately finished fourth. And right now, this season, he's looking to have a really solid run because he's the last driver above the playoff cut line right now. Only seven points above. Now, Eric did mention at the beginning of this season that this would be his final season of full-time competition. So this could be the last time that we see Eric Amarola racing here at Nashville Super Speedway with 10 races to go in the regular season and, of course, 10 race playoff run. We've got 20 more opportunities to cheer on Eric Almarola full-time in that 10 car. Once again, catch that 10 running ninth right now on lap 223 here at Nashville. the outside of the four here comes Martin Truex Jr. as he's looking to take second away from Harvick. Martin's been running really high up the racetrack battling with a loose race car but as this track starts to rubber back up after the after the rain delay that track balance should come to that 19 car. Seems to get a little bit better. Let's listen to the four car see what Harvick's dealing with. That's about a half a car with two car with wider than you want to. I'll wreck if I do that. Temper. I just let you know. And that's something Kevin Harvick has been fighting all this race. As you see Chase Elliott get to the outside of him as that right rear just getting abused too far too much on the long run, not able to run the high line. You think what Kevin Rodney Children and Kevin Harvick pulled off in this race, falling outside the top ten at times of working on it and getting up to second place. And when he got that clean air, he ran his fastest lap of the race just a couple laps ago. But that's how quickly it can change where the four has gotten too loose to run the top side right now as he falls back, guys. So when you're when you're too loose, especially when you're running the top junior, it's so hard to carry the speed because you need to be in a throttle so quickly running that outside lane. And when you're too loose and you go to the throttle, the back just doesn't hook up. And now you lose all that momentum on the corner exit. So you're better off even though you see Truex under the top. He's fast. Harvick can't do it. So you, you have to put your car where it's the best. No matter what the people around you are doing in this situation, you just got to go wherever your car drives the best and make the lap time. I think that's what impresses me about the nine of Chase Elliott, Jeff, is I think he can make lap time both the top and the bottom. As we see the 11 of Denny Hamlin pass Ross Chastain. Denny Hamlin had to do all this work to get that track position back after a bad pit stop. So frustrating. He has a car that can win this race, but you cannot keep coming down pit road losing spots. Hamlin continues to fight. 
fight back as he's in fifth. Harvick dropping back. He's back to fourth now. Kyle Busch trying to join the two win club. Only a few other drivers have done it this year. Now Martin Trex Jr. has the nine of Chase Elliott that is trying to take that spot away from him. I know that Kyle Busch is leading this race by a very comfortable margin, but I'm most impressed probably by Chase Elliott and the pace this car has versus where they were at the first half of this race. Hung around the backside of the top 10 most of the day, but now has really top three speed. We're going to drop back here, though, just right at the edge of the top 10. Bubba Wallace has worked his way all the way back up to 11th. He was a lap down when we had the last caution. For a few cautions ago, he's able to get the free pass. Fast, fast race car. He was fastest in practice yesterday. Didn't qualify well, but he's had a really quick car, as has all the Toyotas. He's moving back forward. Eric, Eric Almirola as well has been through the back of this field. I remember last year when we came to this racetrack, SHR wasn't having that great of a season. This was where one of the one of these races, this was the race last year where they had a great run. Eric had a great run at Harvick too. No surprise to see Almirola running well tonight. See on the bottom of the pylon, that final pit stop window is open. I don't believe we're going to see anybody peel off a pit under green. But if you see a yellow, it's going to be busy, because from this point to the finish, a full tank of fuel would get you there, Marty. And let's give credit to Drew Blickensurfer and Eric Almirola. They were not good at the start of this race. In fact, on the first stop, stayed extra long to make some drastic changes to the 10 car. Well, that worked. He's in the top 10, but maybe about to lose that to Bubba Wallace. Nice call out, Junior. They have come from the back. And remember what happened to them early on. They couldn't get the lug nut on the left rear for Bubba Wallace. He went down a lap in the process, got very upset with his crew. I think the rain delay, Steve, really helped Bubba Wallace. Sometimes he has a tough time kind of letting things go, but that rain delay allowed him to kind of refocus, get back in the race car. Knew he had a quick car, and he's driven it back up through the field now into the top 10. Yeah, and now he's went back to where he wants to be inside the top 10. I think Bubba knows, you know, he sees those Toyotas leading laps as we see almost some contact between the 45 and the 10. You know, Bubba's passionate. He believes he belongs up there. He knows this car is good enough, so when the execution does trip him up, you know, he's passionate. You got the 2311 cars here running nose to tail. And remember, earlier in the race, Bubba Wallace got hit in the back. He stopped on the access yeah. road, got ran into from behind. So it's been a frustrating race for Bubba Wallace, even though such an incredible car in practice on Friday. He knows he has the speed that he can contend for a win here at Nashville. Just needs to track position. And when we see that contact with a 45 car in the 10, he's trying to side draft. And, and we, we, you know, we heard the drivers talk about this car early in the season. It only had about 30% of the side draft the old car had. But if it's even just a little bit, they're going to try to get there. And the closer you can get to that car, the more excessive it is. So you, sometimes you'll see that contact. See Kyle Busch right here has led 43 laps tonight. Talked about his car needing to be a little better in three and four to beat his teammates. They made some adjustments and things have gone well. Remember, Kyle Busch does not have a contract for next year. They just announced Martin Truex Jr. He's in for next year. Still no word on Kyle Busch and what his plans are. I know they want to get that behind him. I know Joe Gibbs wants to sign this guy. And this is why. We know he can win races. He's won a ton of one of the best ever in this sport. They need to get this thing done with Kyle Busch. It's not been all easy for Kyle as we watch him lift down into turn three here. It's really loose right there. That is a that is a huge moment inside the car. Looks kind of small from where we're sitting. But watch inside the car. Watch his hands on the steering wheel. Watch how much he has to move the wheel here. Wow. Oh. Well, it almost deja vu to what happened in qualifying, about the exact same spot where he ended up backing it into the wall. But now it's Kyle Busch out front, leading laps here at Nashville.
60 laps to go here at National Super Speedway, and Kyle Busch is currently your leader. Still a lot of racing left to go here in stage three, but as the laps tick down, here are some stats to keep an eye on, because things will definitely get interesting here in the final part of this race. When you look at the season as a whole, 12 of 16 of the races have seen the final pass for the lead come with 10 laps or less. And of those 10 laps or less, We've seen the final green flag stretch in four laps or less in nine of 16 races. And I know it's been a long night, but why not remind you that this season so far we've seen six overtime finishes. So if history repeats itself, there is still plenty of action to happen on the racetrack here in Nashville. Coming up on the final 56 laps of the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 from Nashville Super Speedway out in front. It is Kyle Busch, but he has been run down by the nine of Chase Elliott. Now it's a matter of can Chase Elliott get by him? Kyle's in big trouble to balance the race car. Chase coming quickly. I don't know that Kyle can put up much of a fight as loose as the car has gotten. Right, a few more laps on Kyle Busch's tires versus Chase Elliott's. Yeah, you ask yourself, is that finally showing as the nine turns to the bottom and uh, relatively easily drives by the 18. And now, listen, this car behind him, the 19 of Truex, he has the same number of laps on his tires as Kyle Busch, so Truex's tires are not falling off like Kyle's are. Let's listen to Kyle Busch. Close the dad. Look all exit there. He's got to maintain three and four there. So they can still hammer the gas on exit and drive off hard. Yeah, they're putting it down all at once, kind of. They're waiting a little longer to put it down. Yeah, I can't do it. Spin it out. That's incredible information. You, you've mentioned it, Jeff. The other crew chiefs can see what the other drivers are doing, so he can tell his you know, his driver, hey man, I can see exactly what the nine's doing with his throttle and this is how he's being you. And that way, not that, you this know, time, this time. not that Kyle can can this do time, what the nine's doing, good, back. just they understands how he's getting beat. You can hear those guys talking, Kyle is coming to pit road as fast as he can. Wow, he's trying to get that thing oh, slowed down. So's the 19, both of them coming to pit road. So this starts off the green flag pit stops and it's two Joe Gibbs racing cars that were very good in this stage. That's a great call by both of these Toyotas. They got to find a way to get back to the front, Marty. I think fresh Goodyear's maybe mean a little bit more here in the evening in Nashville than they have during the daytime in these cooler temperatures. You heard Kyle Busch talk about how loose he is. Same for Truex, although he was quicker than his teammate Kyle Busch. Steve, the one thing you haven't wanted to do with this new car is hit on the early side of the window because of the possibility of a caution. So a little bit of a risk here for the 18 and 19, but that fresh rubber could help, Dave. Marty, no risk here for the nine team. They knew that as soon as they got to the lead and the others responded, that they had to respond. So Chase Elliott will get four fresh Goodyear tires. Sunoco fuel to the end. They basically cut this run in half. So they got the good out of those tires. They get the best out of these tires. And we'll see where they blend in, Parker. 
also on pit road is Ross Chastain in the one car. And I've been told by so many drivers and crew chiefs, you only want to go about 40 laps on a set of tires in this new next-gen car where that right rear starts to go away like we saw for Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. And we're seeing that. That's why these drivers and pit crews are on, on pit road right now. All right, here's the nine on the acceleration lane. There's the 18, top of the screen at speed. The car behind them. We're going to see right here what can the nine here to Chase two, Elliott do. One, it's almost side by five. side. You heard the countdown by the spotter. He knows this is the race for the win if it cycles through. The 18 of Kyle Busch a little earlier. One lap earlier makes a difference. A great pit stop. Are we surprised? Kyle Busch, one of the best to get on and off pit road. But Chase Elliott holds his own running an extra lap. I'm impressed. You've also got to applaud that team. The 18 team, an excellent pit stop by them as well as the 19 team. But it gets Kyle Busch out in front. Now he's in front of the nine as the pit stops are going to continue to cycle through. Now it's about new tires. Who can make time? Who can work through traffic in a 50-lap run? Junior, like you were talking about, can Kyle Busch correct that balance and save that right rear tire if we do have to run 50 straight laps here? Yeah, we never imagined that the drivers would have to try to conserve tire, would have to try to maybe go easier on the front end. As you see Bubba Wallace on pit road making his pit stop. So maybe you, maybe you do protect that tire a little bit on those first five or 10 laps to be able to make it last to the end of this race so that loose condition doesn't get so severe at the end. Now we heard Marty say that people hadn't been coming early on the cycle and here's why. We're showing Kyle Busch because he's the first car with fresh tires. But when you look on the left hand side, right, he's in the 20th position, a lap down to Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson. A caution right now and this strategy is sunk. The guys that have stayed on the racetrack, this is their way of trying to win this race. Dave. And coming down pit road next will be the five of Kyle Larson. His last report, really good in three and four, even when I'm making a pass. So he's gotten this car right, and as we noted before, came through the field. So he'll take on four tires here and throw it for some Elko fuel before the end. The 20th Christopher Bell is on pit road as well. His car was tight, and then mid of, of the corner, in the middle of the corner, they wanted a correction for that. A little bit of problems now finishing up for Larson. A slower stop here for Kyle Larson. You saw the 20 get out quite a bit ahead of him. So Rick Denny Hamlin was last on pit road a lap 206. Oh, he's coming to pit road right here. I thought he would run longer. The team must have just decided they're losing too much time. If it does run green, it's going to cost up too many spots. So now Hamlin on pit road. That'll hand the lead uh, to the car he owns, the 45 of Kurt Busch. Marty. Denny Hamlin come down, coming down pit road. Sam McCauley, the interim crew chief, said we're ready to Oh, pit. we got a car spinning. Oh, off a turn four, a huge save. It's and like a really a close come call on. there is the 47 of, oh, he's got a tire off. The wheel's off. The right rear wheel is off the car. So Chris Busher. And there Rick, you see the right just, rear, and the caution has come out. Rick, they had just stopped a moment ago for Chris Buescher, so you got to think that that wheel lug nut did not get tight. And that is bad news for Scott Graves, the crew chief, and it's also going to be bad news for the rear tire changer. And that's a good example, I think, of why that penalty is so severe, because that tire's rolling down the track in front of cars. If it gets sent over the fence, could be a serious situation for the spectators. That's why NASCAR wants to make it critical that these teams don't let these wheels come off. Look at the damage it's doing to the cars. All of that underbody work, the rear diffuser is getting destroyed right here. Denny Hamlin had just come to pit road when this happened. Kurt Busch was still out on the track. See the wheel. NASCAR will pick it up. Let's take a look exactly when this came off here, guys. So he was sideways in the middle of the corner. Somehow is able to save it. <laughs> the wheel trying to come, well, the wheel's trying to exit the car, and he saves it from spinning out. And then Ricky Stenhouse comes on the scene. He's not sure which way it's going. All right, we talked about loose wheels. We've seen so many of them. You talked about the penalties and the suspensions. Let's talk about how this happens. We'll go on board the NBC cutaway car. There's the socket. You see the teeth. It gets engaged. 
You can't pull the trigger first. It comes off. The nut magnetically stays in the socket right here. That can't fall off. That's big trouble. Let's move forward and show exactly how the wheel needs to be installed. Those drive pins, very important. They locate the wheel on the hub, but the red locking mechanism, that's the key to this whole thing. So as we're gonna spin it forward, we're gonna put our tire back on. You're gonna see these holes right here have to line up to the drive pins. That's the whole key. It's not as straightforward as you may think. You put it on, you might have to go a little right, a little left. We're gonna take it off one more time so you can see what a tire carrier sees. He almost looks through the spokes, locates it. Now it's time to put the wheel nut on. Remember, they're doing this in a hurry. You think this is tight, but right there, the locking mechanism hasn't popped up yet. So that means it's not tight. We're gonna come in, we're gonna tighten it a little bit more. And if we freeze it after this, you're gonna see right there, look how that has popped up. It's cleared the nut. There's no way the nut can come off. That's why if you take your time, which you can't do on pit road, it will assure the wheel not coming off. But when you're trying to do eight, nine, 10 right. second pit stops, that's the difference between a wheel coming off and not coming off. Marty. Well, you look at Scott Graves looking at, and just think about the last few weeks for this race team, right? Charlotte and the Coca-Cola 600, Chris Buescher rolls over in that race, took a while to get him flipped back over. Then the next week he gets COVID, has to miss the race at Gateway. And now this for Scott Graves and the race team, probably going on a four week vacation. And all Buescher said on the radio was said, man, this stinks, doesn't it? Not a good, not a good few weeks for this race team. So there's the car sideways. <laughs> Looked like it was about to be a massive wreck. He straightens it out. Now we're riding on the 47 here. He's trying to slow down. He's got a car and a tire to deal with here. It's so unfortunate for the 17 team. Coming off of a second place finish two weeks ago at Sonoma, and now this happening. Jeff had a great comment. The more, you know, the biggest concern I think is how bad the damage is to, to the under carriage of the car because they rely on that so much for downforce. That's a big break for the 45. He was staying out for this lucky break. He's going to come to pit road. A few cars had unlapped themselves, so he will have to restart behind a few, but a great break for these three drivers, Parker. Right, he looked very lonely. Had a big gap between him and second place, Brian Blaney. Kurt Busch very happy in the handling of that car, especially when they get in clean air. Brian Blaney working his way back to the field after they had that pit issue earlier, just still a little bit tight in that car, Marty. And Joey Logano with the lucky break as well. Paul Wolf puts his fists in the air when that caution came out. Four fresh Goodyear tires for them. They've been struggling with a very loose race car. And remember, they made a move earlier this week to get track position. We'll see if they can keep this track position that now they've been given after this caution. Kurt Busch, he holds that spot. Logano gains one, and Blaney loses one. Two hundred and fifty eight laps complete here at Nashville Super Speedway. Once again, under caution, this time for the 17 of Chris Busher. Unfortunate circumstances for that 17 team. Chris coming off a runner up finish last race at Sonoma, his best finish since his first win back in 2016. I also should mention that is going to be a pretty big penalty for that 17 team. As we talked about earlier, that is a four race suspension for the crew chief and a loss of one crew member for four weeks as well. That would put that reinstatement four weeks from now at the end of July at the Indianapolis road course. Unfortunate for that 17 team of Chris Busher. A huge 4th of July weekend for NASCAR on USA. Saturday, countdown to green at 2 o'clock. Xfinity Series racing at 2.30. And then on Sunday, countdown to green at 2. And Cup Series racing at 3 o'clock. So we showed how the mechanism works to keep the wheels on. But let's show it 
how it really works under the speed of a pit stop. 17 comes in. Watch the right rear tire changer. Off is fine. I want you to focus on on. As he tightens the next wheel on, the jack comes down. I believe the wheel's not tight. So right here, hands it in. Gun goes in. Jack down. He's still tightening that wheel. I'm talking a split second. If the weight gets on that wheel before he tightens that nut, it is not going over that locking mechanism we showed you. You have no idea. You go to the left side, the wheel comes off. It's speed versus danger. Now when we look at the lineup, though, guys, Kyle Busch, Elliott, Truex, Hamlin, they all got to do their pit stop and stayed on the lead lap, as well as Chastain and Harvick. Great job by those guys. Big break for Kurt Busch and Logano. They have fresh tires right there in the third and fourth row. Kevin Harvick still up in the top 10. He's sixth, looking for his first win of the season, as is Martin Shrex Jr., who's running in third. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, making up row one. 39 laps to go at Nashville. Restart's going to be aggressive here. Kurt Busch around the outside gains a bunch of spots in the 45 car. Black Monster Energy Toyota. Truex trying to make it three wide, going very high. Almost contact for the leaders there. Chase Elliott in the nine car on the inside of Kyle Busch in the 18. Down the front straightaway. And Hamlin underneath Truex. Get a downshift into one. Oh, Kyle with a little wiggle right there is going to give the lead up. Hamlin by Truex. And now he'll set his sights on the 18. Here he goes to the inside, trying to get by Kyle Busch. Chase Elliott out in front. Joe Gibbs racing, two, three, and four. Kyle struggling just a little bit right here on this restart. Hamlin slides up the racetrack in front of his teammate. Now he takes aim and tries to go after Chase Elliott. That's three Gibbs cars chasing the Hendrick car. That's what Denny Hamlin does, to see if he looks for clean air. He's been happy running toward the bottom of the racetrack, but that's where Chase Elliott historically likes to run. He likes that yellow line. Yep, Denny Hamlin looking for some clean air. Going to that second lane. Truex now pushing on that 18 car, trying to put a little pressure on his teammate. He goes to the top of the racetrack, Kyle to the bottom. Kyle drives away that corner. Kyle right on the corner panel of Danny. Danny trying to make it tough on him. Danny must have had a really difficult corner in three and four. Kyle trying to fight back after losing a little bit of ground here early. After the restart, it seemed to be getting the balance back in that car. Kyle Busch back up to second. Take a look at how close this was between teammates. And then he had some, had an issue off of turn two, allowed Kyle Busch for a big run. Turn four, rather. Kyle Busch ultimately cleared him. Now Kyle Busch is Chasing Chase Elliott down. Chase Elliott, eight laps led tonight. It's been a domination for Joe Gibbs Racing. If you remember a year ago, it was Hendrick driver Kyle Larson who dominated this race. He led 264 laps by himself at this race. You see it in the column there on the left behind you, uh, these guys. Chastain, Kurt Busch, McDowell back up to seventh. Brad Kozlowski, Harvick, Cedric in tenth. And no shifting right now. We've seen it all night long. Kyle Busch right there did not shift at all. An upshift did not do any downshifting in one. Trying to use the draft a little bit. He's closing in a little bit at a time. Real quick downshift. Loses the nose a little bit right here following the nine. Now he's going to try to run a little higher so he gets in some clean air here. 
and get some momentum on corner exit. So much speed on corner entry in the three that time. Really made a big gain on him. See if he gets more of that in the one. Yeah, look at that. And he doesn't follow him, but Chase up the racetrack. Trying to run a defensive line. Now Chase tries to run the middle again. He sees the 18 go to the bottom. He drives across the nose. You see the, the, the ground lost when Chase did that? Some great old boards right there from the truck. Letting us see these drivers work understanding the challenges they're dealing with, trying to catch the car in front of them. Chase back to the bottom, 18. Kyle Busch trying to follow him. 20, 29 laps to go in this race as Chase Elliott has a three-tenth of a second lead. It's about three car lengths in front of Kyle Busch. But Busch now closing the gap as he takes that shorter yeah, line. One and a half. Watch your mirror now. Watch your mirror. So watch where he's going. One and two. Spotter's giving him information about where he's been running. Chase knows Kyle's faster. He has to try to take Close his air. Have. Watch your mirror. He's going to come up to you here. No worries. That back everything up front. Eight stretching. Where's Kyle go right here? Yep, yep it's tricked him. See if it's going to work out. Showed him something different than the last time. Ran that upper groove. Takes away his advantage down there. Still a healthy one. This is the calmness on the radio to Chase Elliott. Eddie DeHaan. It looks like when Chase runs the bottom. Away there. One and a half here. Time. When Chase runs the bottom, he's, he pretty much keeps an 18 car at a good distance. Right there, he really took the line away from, from Kyle Busch. Kyle got really, really out of gas there trying to gather his car up. That spotter information was just so good. It's more than about clear or not clear, right? That, that combination driver spotter. Eddie DeHunt knows exactly what Chase Elliott needs to hear, and Chase makes those adjustments you guys are calling out just from that information from the roof and what he's seeing in the mirror. Chase Elliott holding off Kyle Busch here at Nashville. than 25 laps to go here from Nashville Super Speedway. You may notice that six car, Brad Kozlowski, currently running in the top 10. This is his first season running for his own team, RFK Racing. He's coming off a top 10 finish last race at Sonoma. And interestingly enough, he already has two wins on his resume here in Nashville, both in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. So let's see if that six car can hold on to another top 10 finish here today. It would mark his third of the season. gap between the top two still about four car lengths separating Chase Elliott from Kyle Busch. Chase Elliott last four years most popular driver. Dave. 
Rick, you just talked about how good the communication was between Chase Elliott, the driver, and spotter Eddie DeHaan. But the key to this race could be in what he didn't say. Right before the restart, listen to the radio and how Eddie DeHaan lays out so that Chase can hear leader Kyle Busch and the revs in his engine going. All right, here we go. I'm going to go quiet. All he said was, I'm going to go quiet, and then good to let Chase know that the green was, in fact, out. But, Jeff Burton, you know as a driver, you're trying to listen to that leader starting so you can match him. That's great info, Dave. There's really nothing Eddie DeHaan could do to help him at that point. Just put it in Chase Elliott's hands. Let him listen to the revs of the guys next to him to help him understand when to accelerate. Good report, Dave. Marty. Rick mentioned a moment ago, Jeff Hunt, a night for Joe Gibbs racing right now. Two, three, and four in the field. And talking to Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, they both admitted to me Sonoma, the last race out, was embarrassing. The best JDR car was 17th. We need to build more consistency, but this week, they're back to having all this speed and running in the top five. So, Junior, have you ever seen a time in the sport where things are just so crazy? A race team can show up and be completely out to launch one week and then the next week be up front and all of them in contention to win. I've never seen it like it has this year where teams are hot one week and cold the next. But I've certainly seen us have rain delays and, and you know, shift from a day race uh, to a totally different atmosphere at night and teams, you know, come to life or cars come to life in a big ship like that. Don't really look at this track as a temperature sensitive racetrack, but uh, whatever has happened has really improved the car that Chase Elliott has. And he's driving away from Kyle Busch. Listen to him. <laughs> Listen to Kyle, he had to lift off a of turn two a couple laps ago. Looked like it was getting a little bit tight on him there. Not sure exactly the balance he's dealing with, but he's struggling to try to find a way to run this nine car now. We've continued to say his name all night long, and his great year continues. The 34 of Michael McDowell in the seventh position, trying to hold off Kevin Harvick. And even if he doesn't, though, a top 10 uh, is a great run for this team. It's a career-type year for the 34 car. I know he has been a Daytona 500 champ before, but never have we seen the consistency we have out of the 34 this year. New crew chief on board, Blake Harris, over from the Truex team and Joe Gibbs Racing already making an impact him and Michael McDowell finding some consistency which as you just pointed out Dale this has been a very hard year to be consistent so consistent top tens is a good run and even Harvick I know eighth is not going to be a line item that he's going to highlight but man he has been running well perhaps better than we have seen most of the year here running in the top five a lot of the night the biggest comeback of the night is right here with this two car Boston Center they had a problem early in the race and then, to be quite honest, they just ran bad. Like, we watched them many times. They were just really slow. They caught a big break. They stayed out on the track. That caution came out. He got his track position. But once he got that track position, boom, he's all of a sudden got speed. Now sitting here solidly running in 10th place. Right here uh, in 13th, Brad Kozlowski, the six cars. We watched this battle between Harvick and McDowell continue to play out. McDowell trying to hold on to seventh. Harvick right there to the inside. Gonna fight down into one and take that spot away. But Brad has struggled. They weren't fast yesterday in practice. They have used some strategy, stayed out on that long run and caught that yellow, was able to get a lot of track position, but he's able to hold it here, sitting in 13th. He's probably not thrilled with the speed and the pace, but to be able to have any kind of a decent result going to help this team's morale and morale in the shop is a key thing man it's a real deal you got guys in the shop in a good mood on monday uh you can build on that when everybody's down sad about the result it's hard to get guys motivated to go back to the racetrack the next weekend morale is a big deal and sometimes it's the race nobody else notices that makes the biggest difference for a race team the three of austin dillon started this race just not very close they started 20th uh, they were up to second on a cycle, but they ran well outside the top 20 most of the night. It's been an uphill battle, but they have continued to work on this three car. And while a top 15 doesn't seem like much, Jeff, you know when you think your day is going to be awful and yet you salvage something out of it, it gives you a lot of confidence in other days that you're always maybe just one or two adjustments away from getting exactly what you need. So, you know, it's not going to make the highlight real, but it may beat 
boost that morale that Dale's talking about for the three car to think they can make their car better throughout the race. I think a lot of people would be surprised if you told them that Ryan Blaney was in the top 10 because it was just 85 laps ago he was sideways sliding through the grass and bringing out a caution. But Ryan Blaney has worked his way back up into the top 10 running in the ninth position. Daniel Suarez running 14th in the 99. And these guys were poised for a top five run. Really, really strong when this race started. Drove up to second place. Had an issue on pit road. They've lost a lot of track position. Daniels fought hard to get it back. Probably not going to love this result if this is where they end up tonight, knowing the pace they had at the start of the race. But still, you got to really like the consistency just in this company across the board. He's got a teammate up there in fifth place. He had a fast car to start of this race. Something to build on going forward. We've got a road course coming up, which we know he's strong at. All right, so on the flip side of all these guys having good runs, I'm going to go the other way. Bubba Wallace had a lot of speed tonight, just caught a bad break. Caution came out at the wrong time, late in the race, had to take the wave around, get back on the lead lap, but he was all the way back at the back end of the pack. And a good night gone bad, just with some bad luck of when the caution came out. He easily had a top 10 car tonight and sitting there running 23rd. Right above that, you see the battle for third between teammates, Denny Hamlin in the 11th. Oh, caution is out. Caution on the racetrack. We got, looks like a drivetrain or something on the 77 car here. Balicki has expired the engine on that one. He's gonna make the hard left turn and head into the garage. And so that brings the caution out. All right, Steve, do you come to pit road? And and how far back do you make that decision? I I don't know, Rick, it's why I'm here anymore. No, <laughs> listen, here's the truth. If you're Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, it's gonna be a short run. It is gonna be really, really difficult to give up the front row. If you come, you're thinking probably right side tires only. The problem is there are 26 cars on the lead lap and they may not stay out, but if they, if no one stays out for track position, I'm going to be so frustrated because we talk about being aggressive and trying to make something of your year, trying to have a, a come from behind win, even with 40 oh, laps. Like Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. There's a lot of T's in there, Strategy. so I don't know. If now we get two the tires. To, yeah, we try to get to guess what the codes are. Well, I see Tennessee Titans. That's T T two tires. Let's see if that. that if that's, Tennessee that's Titans decoder. stand for staying out, they're crazy. Well, that's they my have point. got to stay out right here. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna stay out. And Elliot Bush, if they pit, that's fine. But we just talk about McDowell. I would stay out. Larson, I would stay. I would gamble. Someone would have to give me some sort of track position, as you see right here, the 77 with the engine expire. Remember earlier in the day that car had shut off mysteriously, then restarted. I don't know if those are connected, but two definitely mechanical issues on the 77. We've seen cars stay out tonight multiple times, and yeah. the cars are fast on older tires. I just cannot imagine that these leaders will pit. Oh, split decision. Chase, stay Kyle out. Bush. He comes to pit road, gives up second. And a lot stay out behind him. This is going to be interesting. Marty. Wow, look at the cars that came down pit road and the lonely few that stayed out on the racetrack. Actually, there's a number of them that stayed out on the racetrack. So you heard the Tennessee Titans call for Kyle Busch's race team. Well, he vetoed that and said M&Ms. We'll see what that means. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin immediately came on the radio, said we're pitting. They consider the fact that if we could stay on the front row, that we would stay out on the racetrack. Four tires for Denny Hamlin, that two tire call for Kyle Busch. That's what M&Ms means, by the way. All right, so strategy being played, a two-tire stop for Kyle Busch. Will it pay off?
Final laps here from Nashville Super Speedway. And I mentioned earlier, we saw some potential for this thing to get interesting here towards the end, and it definitely did. I want to reiterate that stat that I told you earlier. In 12 races this season, we have seen the final pass for the lead come in the last 10 laps. So we are definitely in that window now. And interestingly enough, in the other two races that we saw this season affected by rain, the winners were the nine of Chase Elliott and the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. Both drivers are still very much in play here for a win today. As we approach the green flag, you're going to have the nine of Chase Elliott on top with the 45 of Kurt Busch starting next to him. Although I'm waiting to see whether or not this pit cycle cycles through and where drivers will be starting. But guaranteed a fleet of JGR cars up front who have absolutely dominated this race. Six laps to go, coming up on five to go in this race. Kyle Busch came off of pit road, and there were 10 cars that stayed out. He'll restart 11th, but again, we have the choose rule. We don't know if he'll go inside or outside or how many cars will be in whichever lane. Dave. With Alan Gustafson now, who did not hesitate on his call to bring Chase Elliott down pit road, but seeing what happened behind you, how does this play out? Uh, that's what we're going to see. It's what we're here for. You changed that car so well over the rain delay. How impressed are you at how well Chase has driven it? Yeah, I mean, he's capable every week. We just finally got the car where he wanted it and got the track position we needed and you know, did our jobs on pit road. So happy, really proud of the team, really happy to be in this position. And yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll see how it plays out. All right, guys. And they radioed to him. They said, Chase, all you got to do is clear and skate away. We'll see if that happens. We've got a choose rule coming up here. So watch the choose and pay attention to Kyle Busch if you can back there and see where he goes. I think his only shot to actually win this race would have to be to choose the outside line so he can jump into that third groove like he likes to do. There's two cars, now three cars up there, four, five up in the upside or the high lane, and he does choose that high lane. So he'll be the sixth one back. And so watch on the restart when they go into one. They're all his, him and his teammates in that outside line are gonna try as hard as they can to jump to that outside and get to the top of the racetrack in clean air and fly around this racetrack for that first lap and make as many positions as they can, Marty. And I think there might be a little buyer's remorse on those that decided to come down pit road. Even Kyle Busch, who took two there. Denny Hamlin sort of questioned the move, and Sam McCauley said, listen, we weren't going to win where we were. We wanted to take a shot here. So Hamlin with those four fresh tires, we'll see how much ground he can gain, Parker. Already Kurt Busch feeling really good about this call. His car was great the few times that he sniffed that clean air. Now starting on the front row, he definitely could have the speed to challenge that nine. Chase Elliott early in the race put on new tires. A lot of people didn't. He went from 14th to 6th in one lap. Let's see if Kyle Busch can do that. But his brother Kurt Busch on the front row with a chance. I think it's all about real estate. I'm with you, Dale. It's not a question if the 18 is going to have speed. Will there be lanes available or right. will it be clogged up? Is it going to be rush hour or is it going to have the express lane? Well, and how chaotic will it be? Only four laps to go from Nashville. Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, and a great restart for both. There's a good, good push down there on the inside. Kurt Busch is going to go down into turn one side by side. Kyle got blocked. Nowhere for him to go. Quickly falling back to 22 of Logano. He clogs everything up from fifth behind. Chase Elliott has the spot. Kurt Busch running second. Blaney contact. has moved up to third and contacted into the wall. Brad Keselowski gets into the wall after the contact from the 41 of Custer. They stay green. Stay up, stay up, stay up. The six is slow on the track. Can he get it going? Three car links separating the top two. Brad Keselowski, a tire rub, an issue on the right side. You see the black marks behind him. Slow on the racetrack as the field comes up behind him. Two to go. Keselowski down to the access road. It's four car lengths. Kurt Busch up the racetrack. Chase Elliott coming back.
to the white flag. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Chase Elliott down the back stretch for the final time. A huge lead over Kurt Busch, running in second. Looking for his second win of the 2022 season. He'll get it at Nashville Super Speedway. Chase Elliott wins. Yo, baby. Good stuff, boys. Thank you, guys. Ross Chastain, who came to pit road. The highest finisher of those that came to pit road. On that last caution, he finishes in fifth. What a race, though, for Chase Elliott after a long afternoon here in Nashville. crew chief and the great team around him he knew they would figure it out. Wasn't really a top three car throughout the first 100 laps of this race. Turned it around. Elliot led 41 laps in this race, but obviously the most important one, the last one, Marty. Rick, you made the point. We've been calling him the road course king in the last few years. We might want to change that to the concrete king after another win on the concrete. These Nashville fans, they stuck around. They got a whale of a finish. Chase Elliott winds up winning. What were you thinking when that last caution came out? <laughs> I was, I figured it was coming. I, I was hoping not, but uh, just uh, Ryan gave me a great show. Appreciate uh, him doing me a, a solid there and, and getting us out front. So just... Uh, so proud of, of our team. We had a, you know, kind of a setback there about halfway, and was able to get our Napa Chevy dialed back in and uh, get back in the mix. So it was a long day, fun day. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, and they're fired up. I love it. <laughs> uh, just, just uh, so proud of our team, and we've had a pretty rough month, month and a half. So just uh, nice to get back going in the right direction. Getting a win is always huge. Uh, to do it in a, in a really cool city like Nashville is even better. So looking forward to that guitar. Thank you guys for coming out. Y'all have a big time tonight. Well, you first took the lead at lap 245. How did this car come to life after the rain delay? Yeah, we, uh, we, we were able to work on it there a little bit after our uh, penalty and, and got it going a little better. So just uh, stuck with it thanks to Everybody at Hendrick Motorsports too, you know, they, they've been working really hard uh, over the winter and, and through the spring to try to keep up. Engines have been running great. Um, you know, obviously great, uh, great support from Chevrolet. So uh, looking forward to getting home, seeing my family, say to mom and dad, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, enjoy this this week. These things are hard to come by, man. You have to enjoy them and uh, you never know when or if you'll ever get another one. So super thankful and um, looking forward to next week. You know how to play a guitar? 
Uh, not really, but I'm, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> there you go, because the trophy here in Nashville, obviously a guitar. These Nashville fans hung around. Chase Elliott delivered the win for them. What an incredible performance there by Chase Elliott. Appreciate you sticking with us, starting on NBC earlier this evening and making the move over here to USA. Continued post-race coverage will be on Peacock, the NASCAR America post-race show, where we'll have driver interviews and analysis. That's coming up next. And here on USA, Law & Order SUV already in progress. We'll pick that up. Chase Elliott makes his way to victory lane again. It's his second win of 2022, and what a win it was.